Yeah. So I agreed it with Benji uh, before session that he can roll like because he's working, so he can't. He can like listen, but he can't really do much. Uh, so he's going to roll his infiltration at the start of sesh, and either it'll go well and he'll get in, or he'll get captured uh, and taken prisoner. I don't want to get taken prisoner. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what they do with you. You're at risk of being like immediately mercy killed. <laughs> It's like not when the laser eyes start blasting. Yeah, you're, <laughs> not taking, you're not taking prisoner at that point. God damn it, Benji. I'm trying to look at your skills. Stop flipping the fucking damn. Uh, cool. I guess I will take for Benji. Stop flipping the fucking, ta- the fucking tab, that one, Benji. That one was me. God damn it. Uh... I guess I will take swim over agility, please. You are trying to sneak past the hostile coast guard, so I will give you a... But it's also a big sea, and they've got other shit going on, and a shit ton of refugees, so I'll give you a minus five. Well, I, I can't lie. When you said coast guard big sea, I thought you were just emphasizing that it's capitalized. <sighs> that right, huh? Oh. I can't. I think if I add a small amount of lips and iced tea into this mixture, it'll be better or worse? Depends what's in the mixture. Once you go, go put the kettle on. Fuck, I'm yeah. uh, Apple juice, sugar, water, and whiskey. Yes, yes. Uh, iced tea and whiskey and apple iced tea. Hang on. Uh-huh. Uh, what kind of okay. lip and tea is it? Lemon or peach? Peach. Oh, maybe not then. I feel like now. Right, there's only uh, a finger of it left. Uh, I'm not much good with drink mix anymore. Let's see. I think it's alright, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I was saying to Creed that slacklining for the first time in nearly a decade of doing it has, has landed me a date. Mm-hmm. Which oh, is something that's never happened before. Well, it's because you're just a prick wandering around slightly above the ground, Ollie. That's, that's why. <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just a slightly taller prick, and I guess I've heard that the women love the tall. I assume that's the truth here. And I now become tall. I'm, I'm happy for you, Ollie. That's. I, I hope the two of you slackline past each other in adorably cutesy ways. I mean, maybe I was the one teaching her. She came over with a group of mates. And then yeah, like, good at it. No. No, she was actually not too bad, I think. I, I don't really remember. I, I, I was kind of like, there were like seven people who wanted to go that day. So I kind of blacked out on like, the amount of people it was. I didn't even yeah. remember. You get into the <laughs> tutorial fugue. Mm-hmm. Man, I missed doing circus. It was later her friend came over and was like, so my friend thought you were really cute and would like to get your number. And I was like, huh? She so ain't got the balls to do it herself, then no. You are cute, I'll give you that. You've got the same aesthetic as a Labrador, and I think mm. a lot of people appreciate that. You do look a bit like a Disney boy. You do. Aww. It's not wrong. Stop it. <laughs> like, I'll go on a date with you as well if you want. As someone oh, who like, rolled the random genetic dice and came out with what I came out with, you and your fucking Disney prince aesthetic, Ollie. <laughs> oh, I know that. Yeah. <laughs> I've been called a Disney prince. What kind of stuff? I feel so good about myself. Well, I did call cool. you a prick slightly above the ground like two minutes ago. So I mean, you're lucky. Like what I was saying about slacklining was entirely muted at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I feel that Ewan's relationship is fifty with me is fifty percent calling me some form of prick and then some form of nice compliment. Well, Isn't that pretty much just out. every relationship ever? Well, I say every relation. Like, you, you do need a balance, right? It's an emotional whip. Um, a patented British bounce. Mm, you're the Bantosaurus Rex. Good old Bantosaurus Rex. You're right back in a minute. Uh, he's, no, he's, uh, he's not here this week, Ollie. No. Oh, what happened? Oh, he's just really tired. Ah. I would delete the ping. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, he's going to get really confused in, like, four hours. Because there's a decent chance that he'll forget that he told me that he wasn't gonna wasn't gonna be here this week, so he's short, and you'll either have I'm kind of torn on whether to just like schlop him completely out of existence and have you be mutual command, or to give you a I think I talked it over with Carl and we just said 
because they'd be more important than thumbs if we slopped in an NPC to replace him, so that would make them, I guess, wrists? Uh, mm -hmm. But if you have a captain wrists, then he'll just be basically a bit of a non-entity, because yeah. I don't want to take control of the invasion. Where fits the border between wrist and forearm? That's a good okay. question. I mean, like, isn't the wrist the border itself between forearm and hand? Yeah, I think the wrist is simply the gateway between the hand and the forearm. It's a portal through which bones pass to make your nerves work. And blood vessels? Well, I mean, if you've got blood, posh boy. Wow, wow. so classes to be found. Yeah, coming in wow. here with your silver blood in your mouth. <laughs> oh, silver? What the fuck do you take me for? Some peasant. I have gold blood, I'll have you know. Gold blood? Alright, well, this is 40k, so I guess that gets a pass. Stupid emperor's favourite colour man. Yeah, like I had a transfusion that I did myself just to please the emperor. I can see him being weirdly into it, honestly. Why don't more people transfuse gold into their blood in 40k? That seems 100% in keeping with ecclesiastic development. I mean, you, right, you, so have, you have... You have the auto sanguine, right? Which is the, 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 the blood with nanites in. Presumably, you can colour the nanites whatever the fuck you want. Yeah? I, I, I forgot the salt. I'll be back in a minute again. What am I talking about? We've got enough salt between us. I can just, like, wring it out through the internet and see some of these chips. <laughs> oh, so Nick's not here. We could bring up the end of that campaign again. Oh, <laughs> always gets me. <laughs> <laughs> Took a year and a half's worth of store, it's fine. <laughs> Thanks for an unforgettable campaign it was. Mm. Yeah, I remember exactly where I was when that happened <laughs> I remember all of us stayed up like three hours longer than we normally would Just to hear the train wreck that was coming What was the plan? Sorry, is that my life? Talking yeah. end of campaign? Power uh, one. Wow, that's it. Where were you oh, the day power oh, fell? <laughs> Jesus, what did I just come back into? Uh, that's probably what Jesus himself said. Oh dear, what did I just come back into? Uh, when Jesus saw the sins of man, he hesitated a bit when Nick let that demon possess him. <laughs> He's like, maybe not this millennium. It's a good story though. Like I remember, oh, I, love it. I remember it so much more than any time you've ever won yep. anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's where that's where that's why people was saying where were you when power fell. Yeah. Like the worst thing is, is I can completely understand it. Not saying that I agree with it or feel that it was the right move to make, but you know, like one plus one equals three in Nick, Nick logic, I can understand. Yeah, no, I follow the exact logical steps he took to get there, but that's kind of why it's so tragic because he's he's almost Herusian in his in his mindset. You follow exactly what it is he's thinking, but you also understand fundamentally why he's wrong to think that. Fail of one degree on Koya's roll of swim over Adj and a minus five to see if he gets caught by the Coast Guard or not. He drowns. He has to really try to drown. <laughs> he asks uh, to swim is over strength. Yeah, it's over strength by default, but I asked for over Adj. Because I figure you're not just like recklessly powering through the water trying to look non suspicious at full Space Marine motor speed. Wait, do we have silent move? Holy fuck, we do. Yeah, all right, oh. sorry. We'll count that as it was actually silent move. Yeah, okay, I see that this is literally above swim now that you mention it, but in my defense, my eyes are very stupid. It's going to be weird to cut out. So we're only getting, like, none of Benji's side of the conversation. Uh, cool, is it still a... Oh, in that case, a mile pass. Okay. Cool. Okay, oh, that was so we I said someone should be the voice of Benji. Sorry. Oh, uh, he's he's just doing this one role, and then he's mostly spectating for the rest of the session. Um, ah, right. Presumably, so that he doesn't have to, because Benji's the only person who watches the YouTube, right? So, presumably, I used to. I mean, it's fair. There's a lot of stuff on there. Uh, yeah. I, I will finish Cartborn one of these days. I'm slowly working my way through it. Cartborn and the last VTM campaign or two that I'm trying to like, I've got such a massive fucking backlog of. That's why I'm trying to keep up to date with this and the current VTM campaign. Uh, yes, yeah, so Benji's the only person who watches the YouTube, and if 
he has to sit here and listen to all of your decisions after the fact, where he can only scream into the void, rather than at least <laughs> scream through the static of your computer screens, where you can't hear him. Like, at least here he can object in real time and textually, so I suspect is probably part of the appeal. We can just choose not to read it. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> so, Koya and the boating team, in that case, uh, will, over the course of however long this session takes, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit less, um, manage to sneak their way ashore in the Marotha Metroplexic. Uh, only one DOS, so nowhere particularly advantageous, um, but presumably one of the more sort of disused areas where the sprawl gives way to mild wilderness, one of the last areas left. And with that, let's have some reminders from last session. Those are episode titles. Cool. Kuzco wants to buy command. A bit late for that now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but make sure Mackie doesn't chance his luck shooting at Zalona. No one's going to make sure that happens. Uh, Creed is in the tunnels in his auto carriage. Nazim is done playing nice guy, but Nazim is also Schlorp that has been replaced with Captain Wrist, who is still playing nice guy. Koya is on a boat. Wrist. Sorry? I love that we've gone with Wrist. Well, we, uh, there were no competing counter offers, so thumbs. It's like brother slash. Up to sergeant, it's thumbs. At captain level, it's Wrist. And then I guess you would get like forearm for Grand Company. Uh. How far do we have to go to get toes? I think they go up, not down, right? So you're yeah. just going to get to a point where your Legion Master is is Legion Master Neck Vertebrus. Legion Master Vertebrus. I mean, it works. That actually sounds kind of badass, yeah. Good. All right, well, let's see if it... What's the Latin for wrist? Carpi. All right, sure. So if we're doing the Latin theme then, then you have Captain Carpi on, t- uh, on side today who will be uh, schlorped in in place of the absent Kus- uh, Kuzco, Nazim, because your Nicholas is tired and is taking a, a week off to collapse unconscious, which is very fair. Oh, I suppose we also missed this from the bloody reminders, but you all have been just, like, planetary bombarding the shit out of things. Uh, you, you've taken out huge swathes of the planet at this point. It's in the range, isn't it? Uh, uh, we've done the range and the area but Yeah, but bearing in mind this is the major continent and the environmental uh, what's it called? The environmental fallback of this is going to be pretty bad. Ooh. Like, if nothing else, it's potentially helped your air situation, uh, the, the air war, because both of you will be slightly fucked now by the massive cloud of dust that's going to have been smashed up by the shockwaves of launching macro cannon shells into a sandy desert. It's like arguing with an idiot. Bring you down to their level and beat you with experience. Who's the idiot in this situation? Really, us. We didn't mean to throw up a continental smoke screen. You just did it by accident. That's why we're the idiots. I don't think luck counts as experience, but... Okay. Oh no, we have an experience of like trying to manage our fuck ups. Ah, I see. Not prepared for your level of small C chaos. <laughs> cool, okay. Captain's asleep. What do? Well, sorry, not Captain's asleep. Captain Carpy is in fact on the bridge, giving various disjointed orders and trying to coordinate the air battle ineffectually. Uh, at last check, I believe the only other person on the ship at the moment is Mackie. Mm-hmm. And otherwise, everyone is of equal authority. Technically, Kuzco doesn't outrank anyone for c- any of the other members of the crew for command purposes, but he's also not, strictly speaking, under you directly. So he's lateral with authority that can be superseded by yours. But he also has... I mean, I can be under you if I want. Whoa. hey I just kind of low-key assume that fraternization is uh, not okay amongst Marines. Feels fair, like. like I was going to say. To be fair, like I figured it was more with like a hypno indoctrination era, but like I thought they just had that stuff like burned out of them. Uh, yes, I mean even nowadays they're still supposed to, but also like this is the Horus Heresy, the one period that 
It is an unreliable witness, but it's fucking, um, God, what's his name? Ignace Carcassi in Horus Rising, who incredibly non-subtly insinuates that space marines are hung like horses. And it's Dan Abnett, so it's not oh, man. It's exactly casual canon, but it's a weird thing to try and clarify. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, I can see that. I think they're like the boo from the booth. Smooth, like the bonnet of a Porsche. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's that's always what I thought. I think that's what everyone thought until Dan Abbott yeah. came swinging in, going, "No, monster dogs, <laughs> monster dogs for my oily superhumans." <laughs> like the worst thing is, is now I can't get like the image of like the equivalent of like a grown man's arm just swinging there. Oh right, like especially with exactly. how like. Chodely, yeah, how, how chodely proportioned their human bodies are. Which, yeah. yeah. And I the armor like, as well, right? Like, the armor itself, I don't feel like it would fit all that much dick in. I feel yeah. like if they had them in the old pattern, they would have been awkwardly weaponized in the 80s. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> it's spit acid as well. <laughs> Man. I was well, going, well. So I was going through the new, uh, the new, newish Chaos Codex, and it warms my heart that there's a noise marine in there painted up in like full 80s hair metal band, down to like yeah. cheetah imprints on oh his shins. God. It's the best fucking Oh, yeah, I think I've seen that one. Yeah, it's I need so to see good. this. Um, cool. Anywho, this is all a massive fucking tangent. Who wants to go first? What are we doing? Um. I'm wondering where my habit... So so the plan was essentially trying to sort the Marotha Metroplex, right? Take it over, dis- disable the Void Shields, land our people in there, right? Oh, Mao. Wow. Mao? Wow. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit for me, Ollie. Oh, uh, really? Can you hear me a bit better if I do this? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So I'm thinking... Um, I think it wasn't the plan to sort the Marotha Metroplexic from inside. Which is, I think, what Benji's partially doing. He's going in via a sea route, right? Yes. Disable the void shields, and then... Yeah. And then we can take over. Okay. He's, he's completely given up, though, on the idea of the rest of you helping out. So he's he's not out of it, but he's functionally out of it for this session. He's done his role. We know what's happening with him. Okay. Uh, I will I mean, also remind you that Marotha doesn't have, like, one big void shield. It's got a nest of, like, overlapping bubbles, but they also don't overlap completely, so there's huge areas which aren't void shielded. I've been is wondering if I can maybe go to the anonymous structures and use those anonymous structures, anomalous structures, to, um... I don't know, they said they're kind of revered and worshipped, right? By the, by the Marothians? Uh, if you want to like, hold them hostage, yeah. Well, exactly, yeah, my plan was to hold them hostage, yeah. Sorry, I'm just having a speed double check on my things. Um, not that they're worshipped, but there's some kind of religious uh, significance for them. Uh, and no one's going to stop you at the moment. The only person uh, who possibly might would be Captain Carpy. And Captain Carpy, in his usual trademark manner, is running a stable but moderately ineffective um, bridge, mostly That's trying to keep abreast of developments in Rastic's Mark and help coordinate the uh, invasion of the Hoi Ranchins on Port Voront, uh, whilst also keeping the air war under control and stopping the ship from falling through low orbit. I wonder if I could help. In then with the Marotha Metroplex of my Havoc squad. We have two lines of attack heading there already, but they're, no by, yeah, they're by no means a solution. Mm. You know, looking at this map, it occurs to me now that the only thing you explicitly wanted to bomb from orbit, you actually didn't. Ooh, Fort St. Stannis. Fort St. Stannis. Yeah. Do you know what? I might actually go... Um, go um, I don't know. If I could get a... No, a sorry. drop pod. I was wondering if I can maybe then get a drop pod with uh, my crew down to Fort St. Stannis. I believe the drop pods are, like, because it, it's not safe to bring them through the air at this point. Um, mm-hmm. So I... It would be Stormbird, wouldn't it? Yeah, you, you'd take a Stormbird. But yeah, you can absolutely take a... Because I think you've got one... St- oh, no, the Stormbirds are pulled back, right? Um, yeah, one, well, one of them had to take us up. We yeah, one of them, them one of them took you up, but even the rest of them have, have pulled back at this point because their missions in Zalona are done, and they were starting to take like fairly heavy fire from yeah. the um, 
uh, Marotha and Air Force, who are now based basically entirely out of Marotha, but that's also the area you're mostly operating in. Or uh, what, was it, what was the reason we wanted to bomb the fort again? Because it's, it's part um, of a wider plan to shock and awe Marotha, uh, a plan which is mostly in ruins at this point. In which case, yeah, I would like to take a storm bird down to Fort Simpson with my Havoc squad, which is five marines, including myself, with earthquake guns, and then five marines with heavy bolters, I think. Yeah, indeed. A small reminder for you from the briefing, as it's been a while. Uh, Fort St. Stannis is a theoretically active uh, military installation, but it's usually not manned that heavily. It tends to have a, a, a skeleton garrison. It is the colossal, sprawling castle that used to be the home of the uh, singular king who ruled the Spur, the area which is now the Marotha Metroplexic, through the dark times of old night. I'm going to comms out to the Admet contingent and ask them if they would like to send someone down as there may be some form of information gathering we can have here. Uh, the Admet are openly hostile to you at this point, I'm afraid. They're, they're just not listening to anything you've got to say. I, I thought as much, but that's fine. I, they that's they fine. know I I've contacted them. I don't think you had any context for that, so so to you it comes as just a mess of binarics screeching over the Vox, and then a nearby cogitator detonates. Oh, the cogitator destination, I was going to say, well, at least that's better than them actively trying to fuck us, just to make a point. Well, if my suit starts feeding twitchy, I'm going to get real paranoid. Um, they yeah, cool. That to you. Almost certainly. Well, what they would probably do is, I reckon, actually, is they'll turn the temperature on the internal thermometer up. Yeah. <laughs> and just boil me alive in it without, you know, trying to destroy any of the electronics. That'd be my do. guess. Well, you do carry a microfusion generator with you. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to get warm. Get uh, cool, warm. yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm happy to, to take a, a storm bird down. Okay. Just have a speedy refresh. Okay. You've spent a couple of hours aboard the uh, Obsidian Heart, helping to coordinate the orbital bombardments whilst your weapons and armor are cleaned, scrubbed, reloaded, recharged, etc. And your Stormbird undergoes uh, preliminary repair and uh, rearming. But now it's time to head out. Your Havoc squad still on high alert and thoroughly rested in so much as they can be. Their stocks of ammunition and combat drugs resupplied. Meet you in the hangar bay and you launch almost immediately. Oh, um, do I get double the amount of frag grenades and crack grenades? I know that's something Nick was talking about last session. Um, sure, I think... How many, how many do you get by default? It's three and three, right? Three. It's three and three, yeah. I know he was talking about doubling. I vaguely remember that from the last step. Uh, uh, yeah, last sure, you can, you can double it. I mean, it feels like you're a very close combat-focused um, legion at this point anyway, right? So more grenades makes, more, uh, makes a fair amount of sense. It does oh, mean sorry, can... you're... Oh, sorry. I was going to ask, my, my Graviton can, you said it's pretty normal for Death Watch, sorry, for Heavy Marines to get backpack supplies. Do I get a backpack supply for the Graviton cannon? Doesn't it come with something like that? Uh, yeah, I can check for you, though. You'd, oh, have, you you'd have to have it modified regardless, is what I would say. Uh, and that is a... You, you probably need a Forge World to do that. I don't think that's the type of thing mm-hmm. you can get on field very easily. I mean, yeah. maybe if oh, your right. admec was cooperating, but they're pissed at you over something or other. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. No worries, in this. that's all good. Fort St. Stannis is... Basically entirely obscured as your Stormbird begins to descend through, in fact, not even the lower atmosphere. The ship is, I don't want to make major decisions, so the ship is still in low orbit above the planet. Fairly stable low orbit, ready to bomb somewhere else at a moment's notice. <coughs> and as a result, the outside of it... Uh, uh, even low orbit, yeah, you'd be well above the clouds. So even from the, uh, just outside the ship, you can see a thick layer of dust clouds. Two colossal ones, in fact. One in the east over most of Vorog Desig and a good, uh, a good amount of Gralop Desig, and another in the west 
covering Gralop Desig, northern Telefulis Desig, uh, and southern slash eastern Merot Desig. The one is an almighty cloud of sand blown skywards by the uh, forcible macro cannon shells pounding dozens of kilometers on their path to annihilate the Defiance Aeroplex, whilst the other is both a haze of smoke from a rush of forest fires sparked through the uh, thick woodland scrub outside Zadagot, and also wood chips, uh, wood chips, um, stone chips, and again snow pounded up, up, up into the air, forming a sort of pulpy, wet mess of thick, stormy clouds over the Gralock range making it hell for flyers to get anywhere near the Obsidian Heart, which is a little bit of welcome safety, but also making it somewhat hellish for you to descend. This is a significantly more violent trip than the Stormbird than you were used to. Just want it noted, but now I'm thinking that it probably would have been a good idea just to try and starve them out with the simulated nuclear winter. I think that would kill everyone on the planet. Well, up to a point where they say, like, oh, okay, we'll give in. Uh, you've not actually asked for a surrender or anything, for the record. You um, just kind of went with it. That is actually a good point. We should probably, like, check, see something about that. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, your the offers that you made to uh, the Rastix Markers and uh, Hyrantis were contingent on your help them overthrow Marotha. So... You might need to do a bit more to force a major surrender, even as they're like. Ultimately, they they probably should surrender to you, but this is also, I think, just about still in the uh, just over the first half a day worth of fighting. Okay. Days worth of fighting, so their will to fight is probably quite high at this point. They're still like filtering through the reports of the slaughter at Zaragot. The defeat of forces outside of Zalona, their attempted barricade of the Telefula's farmlands. They know it's happened naturally, but it's also sort of difficult for uh, difficult for them to get. Still in that, like lines. we can repel them and like make it work, sort of stage. Exactly. The, oh God, we're so fucked. So. Ex- exactly, especially knowing that they're winning the air war or were. Yeah. And I mean, I suppose they're technically still winning it at the moment, as it's just difficult to fight. <laughs> Nevertheless, the Stormbird descends to the sprawling mass of Fort St. Stannis. You can't see it even slightly through the thick, rainy smoke kicked up by your orbital bombardment. <clears throat> However, you do get an impression from the uh, the scans, the auspexes in the Stormbird's cockpit that you're dealing with an extremely, exceedingly vast structure. There's no telling how far down it goes into the mountain, but it stretches through mile after mile of foothills and up, up, up into the lower reaches of the Gralloc Range. Perhaps 20, 30 miles worth of castle. A truly colossal, immensely unwieldy structure. One of the crewmen in the front, uh, a fellow brother Astartes, asks you, Mackie, where you'd like to be put down. Um, so is it like 30 miles of walls and there's like a small keep at the centre of it? Or is it like full-on maze-like castle for the entirety of all uh, tens of miles? Maze-like castle. It's not necessarily the widest thing in the world, but it's long as all hell and sort of sprawls. As you stare at the, the Auspex readings, you're struck as it, uh, struck by an image of something resembling nothing so much as a, can- a cancerous growth built into the lower reaches of the mountainside. I would then like to, you know, my, my logic for aiming at people with the best hats, I, I'm going to turn this slightly, uh, I suppose, figuratively on its head, and I want to land at the tallest part of the castle. Define tall. Do you mean the tallest tower? Do you mean the bit that's furthest up into the foothills? Uh, the part that looks like um, like the, like whatever would be. A, I feel like tallest part of the castle. So so the the, the most grandiose, biggest looking part. I think the part that looks like it might have a throne room beneath it. Okay, let's take a 
I mean, if he's small, he's got, like, his throne in the basement. That's all I'm saying. Hello, bitches. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, Fabs. The, the king is long dead at this point. He's been overthrown by his people centuries hence. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even, like, one of those replicas to remember the, like, situation. Oh, no, no, he's at, at least as far as your initial scouting report went, if you'll recall, uh, he's treated more as a sort of evil boogeyman. Uh, okay. Right, what to make you roll on this, Ollie? I think this is probably going to be awareness over perception at a, I think, a minus 30 from the conditions. Oh, so I'm trained in that, plus 10, plus another 20 from my six plus 30 together. Uh, was that a minus 30, did you say? Yeah. You can probably have a plus 10 from the Stormbirds, um, all specs as well. Cool, so that's, uh, in total a plus 10, so perception of 50 or under. Uh, I'm going to spend my one and only fate point. On your perception roll? Well, 74, or, I mean, okay, yeah, to be fair, I don't know, it's, no, it's I two mean, degrees I, of failure. I mean, you, you go for it if you want to go for it, Ollie, I just... Has two degrees of failure. I mean, I suppose, though, this isn't a life or death situation. It's going to be put down somewhere that isn't where I'm at. So, yeah. Yeah, but no. It could be a life or death situation that you see somewhere that looks safe and it's totally not, right? Also true. Also true. Uh, you know what? It's fine. It's fine. I, w- I, won't, uh, I, won't, I won't spend the fate on it. Yeah, you, you can get an idea of the layout, but you have no idea the exact details. Even on the all specs, like which towers are particularly large is, is horrifyingly distorted by the immense dust storm the bombardment kicked up. This thick, rainy, lightning-flecked atmosphere that you're traveling through. A sort of almost soup-like substance. You pick the tower that you think is tallest, but ultimately you have not even a slight guarantee that that's the case. And in these, what would be, I suppose, hundreds of square miles, really, is worth of uh, winding terrain. There's no telling how far you are away from your actual mark. The actual... Uh, so you find a courtyard in a particularly high keep, or put down a top a particularly high keep, I suppose. There's no telling, like, how sturdy the structure is so it'll be difficult for you to see like whether it'll actually hold up long under the Stormbird. Your marines and yourself simply pile out and the Stormbird takes off back for the safety of the Obsidian Heart leaving the eleven of you alone in the castle atop the back. Like, my mental image was it lands, everyone piles out and as it's taking off the tower just starts crumbling from beneath so you can't even jump back in. Yo. <laughs> you should have rerolled that perception! <laughs> no, indeed, as you uh, see the Stormbird take off, you note that the brick of the castle doesn't seem to have so much as a scorch mark from the engines. Mm, interesting. Very interesting. Okay, I think we should probably do one more thing with Mackie before we switch over to someone else. Mm-hmm. Oh, we want to, Mackles. Old Mackie with. The D? You know, never mind. Um, <laughs> apparent Mackie hung like an apparent D. Uh, do I see any nearby doorways or entrances? From your vantage point, even through the storm? Dozens, perhaps hundreds. Uh, anything that's on the, the courtyard I'm in. Uh, yeah, you can easily get down off of the, off of the, um, I think we changed it to a keep, so you're at the very top of the keep, but you can easily get down okay. off the keep you're in. Okay, yeah, let's get down off the keep. Let's uh, start going throughout the, um, start going down throughout the castle. I want to look for anyone. If there's any sort of people around, I would like to try and get information out of them about where I can go. Or perhaps vox up to the ship and ask the Horian sent over anything about. No. Imagine we don't really have a huge amount in the interior of the fort. Um. You also note, actually, that through the storm, Vox contact with the Obsidian Heart is kind of patchy. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Even with it being yeah. this close, you're having real trouble making it out. It's probably the storm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm going to... Yeah, I want to I wanna start descending through the keep um, and look for signs that can lead me to, like, some more impressive-looking areas, potentially, and find a person, kidnap them if I come across anyone. 
get some information out of them. Navigate surface at a minus 30, please. Sure thing. Uh, does my sensors count for this? I would say. Cool, so just 20. Um, uh, what was it again? Navigate surface? Yep, yep. I do have that trained. I'm currently one tick in it, so... But it's a, it's a special skill, so I don't get the plus 10 if it's trained, right? It's trained. Uh, so, plus 20 over... Uh, minus 10 over. Uh, yes, that's accurate. Cool, oh, minus 10. Uh, that was... What is, uh, Navigate Surface Intelligence? Yeah, you could do it over Intelligence or Perception, whichever's highest, I would say. I'll do it. There's still four degrees of failure. Uh, which means I will get hopelessly lost. So I kind of do want to spend... I'm going to spend a fate, actually. I'm going to re-roll that. Because that's... Whee! What's the dog? Right. 94. Uh, that brings up the five degrees of failure, I believe. Five degrees of failure. Oh man, as you get lost in the spooky castle in the middle of the storm you created. Oh god, it's turning into Silent Hill or something, isn't it? This is turning into Resident Evil <laughs> Village. You and your squad, naturally hoping to cover more ground and confident in your squad box, split up. Oh, I'm going to say we never split up. No, I'm not going to say we ever do a split up. That's Standard a damn thing operating procedure. You is it? Yeah. You don't split really? up entirely, but yeah, you're 100% split up. You've got a squad box. You're trained in small arms tactics. Why would you move as one unit of 11 people? If nothing Doesn't else... you have giant all... earthquake guns. Yeah, if nothing else, you've all got giant, like, giant earthquake guns or giant um, heavy bolters. In fact, you've got five and five of each. The only person there who is by default wielding a gun, which you don't, uh, which is any good in close quarters, is the sergeant, who's presumably there with a chainsaw and a pistol. He's loving it. So I would say you probably like partner up with you sticking with one two, uh, one pair. Okay, but you, you, you'd one hundred percent not like move in one giant Scooby Doo esque blob. <laughs> Haven't yeah. Like, you're your Marines. You should be confident enough to clear this out, right? Yeah, also that. I mean, to be fair, it's, 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 I mean, that's the hope, I suppose. Hey, you know what? Fair enough. Okay, fine. fine. Cool. Do you want to move with the sergeant and who he's paired with, or someone else? I'll move with the sergeant. Uh, no, actually, I shouldn't have all levels of command. I'll move with someone else. Sound thinking. Okay. So... You move with a pair of junior marines. You're something of a f- uh, not something of a fan of, I suppose. But they're they're novitiates who you had raised to your havoc squad. Um, you're 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 a fan of them. You think they're young up and comers. You appreciate their their metal and their devastating style. I suppose you'd have one uh, grav gun, grav cannon, and one heavy bolter, presumably, and then yourself with another grav cannon. Yeah, that makes sense. The uh, the issue that you run into as you rapidly split up is though your squad vox is extraordinarily robust, you rapidly lose contact with each other. One minute everyone's there, the next minute they're gone. Contact with the Obsidian Heart is likewise cut off. You can still see life signs and squad markers, but the castle is so vast that even trying to navigate towards each other, even at times punching directly through walls, you always seem to end up further away from each other than you are close by. It's as though the spooky architecture... Castle. I'm sorry? I was saying spooky castle. It's as though the architecture was constructed specifically to confuse and disorientate. And presumably some kind of countermeasures built into the place, uh, interfering with your electronics. Mm-hmm. That seems like a good place to switch over to someone else. Oh, yeah. I'm going to grab a drink and be back in a sec. Cusco or Coatlmox, who wants to go? I'll just swap up for a CD, so if Chris is available. So. Cool, cool. Coatlmox, I believe we last left you on an auto carriage, uh, in an auto carriage, with your small squad, or like a yeah. hand picked squad. Riding north along underground train tracks towards the Marotha Metroplexic. That's the dream. Let's go. Okay. Oh, I've got a fun plan if I meet any resistance as well. 
in the right, last right. session I bought Feedback Screech. And that's got to be enhanced by a tunnel, right? I think it would be, yes. What <laughs> are the Marines? Uh, you've got auto dampeners built into your armor. And he can also warn them that it's coming. Okay, that, that's alright, yeah. So it's not that it wouldn't be effective, but he can certainly mitigate it. Yeah, I, I just got like the image of that echo, you know? Oh yeah, no, 100%. But like, the the armor is built to compensate for things like this. It's the same as like, if a nuke went off right in front of you, you're, well, obviously right in front of you, you get vaporized, but if it went off within your eye line, you wouldn't immediately go blind because your sensor, uh, your helmet's, um... Like an auto filter. Yeah, your helmet's auto filters kick in and, and like, dim the brightness. Well, they'll try to. Which they can probably handle both of those instances, but it doesn't always work completely. <laughs> That's why plasma users don't immediately go blind as well. Though I suppose it doesn't explain the guard. <clears throat> a couple of hours go by as you trundle along the underground maglev tunnels towards Marotha. Combs down here with the obsidian heart are sketchy, but somewhat maintainable. Captain... Captain, what was it? Captain Cappy? Captain Cappy? Cappy. Cappy. Captain Cappy? Wait, Captain Cappy? That's the worst name. <laughs> Carpy. It was Captain Carpy. Oh. Sounds more right. I knew it couldn't be Captain Cappy. Like, I might have thought Cappy. that, but someone would have told me. Probably Ollie. It almost sounds like it'd be a Pokemon. <laughs> Cappy, Cappy. <laughs> Ah, so, you proceed for some hours up the maglev ways, uh, maglev conveyor ways, towards Marotha. It's silent going. Intermittent contact with the Obsidian Heart. Uh, you get news that oh. Mackie's back down on the surface, uh, deployed somewhere. It was kind of hard to make out. There's something about a storm up above, but it at least means the air wars abated, and you have no idea what's happening to uh, Kuzco's expedition south, other than something about smashing or resistance. Uh, but, you know, people say that so much, it loses all meaning. It's only as you near the tunnel that you see eyes scanning the darkness a picked corner pointing in your direction mounted on one of the walls what do you uh, I'll stop as close to it as I can rear up take off my helmet and do a big teethy grin and then order one of the boys to shoot it out I don't know how many teeth you've got left your tongue fell out your mouth but you can do a grin very macabre grin. <laughs> it's more really just kind of gnashing your gummies at him, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh. So. The, uh, the camera swivels to face you and then explodes more or less in your face. If you had many pain nerves left, you'd probably feel that, but as is, it's just a matter of picking them out of the calloused, bleeding mess that used to be your face. The important thing is, none of them hit the eye lasers, the expensive bit. Everything else is replaceable. The flesh is weak. Helmet back on, you continue up the ways. It's silent going for another 20 minutes, and you reckon that you're getting close to what must presumably be underground Marotha when you hear a long, distant boom from further up the tunnel. Oh, that's not good, brother. <laughs> a microsecond later... A shockwave hits you. Not a dramatic shockwave, enough to buffet the car. Car, auto carriage. I will take Tactica, Tactica Imperialis, uh, Law Principia Bellicosa, please, at a plus 20. Over. First question is later. Sorry? Then roll first question is later. What was it? Um, Law Principia Bellicosa. I guess you could roll over either perception or intelligence, whichever's highest, at a plus 20. So. What's the skill? Am I good at the skill? Oh, I'm not trained in any skills. Uh, that'll be a simple fail. It, uh, it might be down as... Um, what's this thing you on your sheet? Um, Primer Imperialis. Oh, yeah. yeah it is. Oh, I just have it trained, so... 
That'll be three off of success. Cool. Yeah, you. I mean, you recognise a distant explosion of some kind <laughs> rather than an incredibly high-powered rifle, but you can't really easily tell what. I'm assuming they're trying to bury us in here, but I shall proceed for now. <laughs> it's another five to six minutes of motoring. You're on the very outskirts of the Marotha Metroplexic when you come across it. A layer of rubble blocking the tunnel path. I can get contact to our ship. Patchily, but yes. I'll try and patch some contact. Captain Carpy, I need an exit from my tunnel. The Vox crackles for a moment. God, what voice do we want for Captain Carpy? I'm tempted to do incredibly posh. Yeah, that is what you should do. You can't just impersonate Sophie, that's just me. I think incredibly posh would work quite well. You can't just imitate Thanks. Sophie, that's incredibly neat. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to... <laughs> it's very difficult to get a key phrase that isn't nah now. Pip, 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 pip. <clears throat> Are we back to Pokemon? I'm sorry. <laughs> Quattlebox. It's difficult to... You. Are you... Bombardment? Just south of my position, please, Brother Captain. Are you sure you want to do that, Creed? Maybe a bit further south? Uh... <laughs> Couple I swears good... will do. I don't, I don't think it's a good idea, man. I wouldn't do it. I'll, I'll... Your eye lasers are going to go. I'll authorise that. Makrilototek in blast. We killed. We must look out for our troops on the ground. All right, brother captain. All right. So I found the rubble where they started caving us in. Do I? You've not heard any further booms, but you found a like the the tunnel has been collapsed in front of you. Yes. How deep under are we? Uh, somewhat difficult to tell, but God, how deep is a, is the average metro line? I would think you're maybe like. How deep is the tube? Cool. So we'll say you're maybe a, an even 100 meters under the ground. I have, what, five brothers with me? So that's what? Uh, five Christine brothers, Five brothers, a wheelbarrow, and one very tortured auto carriage whose suspension is fucked at this point. And between us, we'll have, what, like 15 crack grenades? Uh, yes. I don't think those are great for exploding dirt. Uh, crack grenade does a meter at a time as well. Yeah. I suppose they are great for exploding dirt, but it does only do a meter at a time. Dirt, eh? How good a chainsaw is it? Digging. <laughs> I mean, probably not great, but I suppose space marines are reasonably decent, and and I hate to say this, you did bring the wheelbarrow. <laughs> Yeah, we literally have a wheelbarrow. <laughs> Alright, operation <laughs> dig out, boys. <laughs> I love the idea, though, Creed, of you just being like, pull the dirt in my body. It's not like I'm using it anyway. Oh, Look, I'm a marine filled with dust. What a novel idea. This will never happen again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, psychic commanders, the lower ranks, non psychers filled with dust. It'll be a great time. <laughs> What's that? The sound of a thousand suns blowing up in the distance. No, I don't know where I was going with that. Actually, that was terrible. I apologize. This that is a landmark moment. Ollie apologized for a pun. Oh, fuck. I wasn't a pun, though. That's the thing. Four it wasn't. Five it was like... years. I mean, it was a pun. It was just shitty and lacking context. Mm. That's the thing. That's why I'm apologizing for it. But I, I was going to say it's fine. You know what? Fair enough. I've talked. So. You're. <laughs> I mean, you've not got arms or legs, so I don't think we can fairly roll this over your strength, Clattlemox. You do, I suppose, have a servo arm. I want servo arm. I have laser eyes with unlimited ammo. It gets them evaporating dumb intermittently. You probably can... Between your acid spit and your laser eyes and your team's acid spit, like you can chew through a fair amount of rebar given time, so it'll take you a while, but I would say, given effort, you probably can dig your way through... <laughs> Uh, I, I would say this is probably going to be a command role in that case to coordinate your squad. So I will take command 
over the stock strength of 40. You can have the Space Marine bonus because they'd have it. And depending on DOS or DOF, we'll see how long it takes you. Sure. So, strength bonus is two. Oh, strength command. That'll be two successes. Two successes. Okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll take you a couple of hours. But with five Marines working at full pelt, and yourself supervising and occasionally being lifted up to help with laser eyes, you're uh, you're able to eventually dig a passage through large enough and stable enough to get yourselves in. You will not be able to bring the auto carriage at this point, unfortunately. I would say with some pressure to fold, like force the wheelbarrow into a small, smaller shape and then bend it back out again. It's not going to be in great state. Functionally, it's gone down to poor quality from average. Uh, sure. But you you can probably bring the wheelbarrow through. Yeah, we'll take the wheelbarrow. <laughs> you are on foot on the other oh, side. If, if the auto carriage has a hood ornament or logo or anything, you're going to take that as a souvenir? Uh, uh, call odds or evens for me. Evens, please. Odds, it does not have a hood ornament, I'm afraid. Oh, any iconography on it at all? Um, not really through the haze of like dust and sparks and blood and such covering uh, I'll just rip a bit of scrap off it then. It's fair. It's, uh... Are you wearing Koya's armor, if I recall correctly, or is it just the helmet? Uh, I was going to grab a random marine's armor instead of his specifically, but I think you did say I grabbed his. Oh, that's fair. I mean, you can you can have grabbed a random marine's instead of colors if you like. I suppose. Yeah, I wanted it full on. This was like floppy, unattended limbs. Oh no, Koya's saying you've got his. Oh, this is great. So this means that uh, Captain Carpy back up on the ship doesn't actually have a read on where Koya is. He thinks Koya's in the tunnels with you because he knows your armor's destroyed, but you can see Koya's mark is down there. So you know, obviously, that's where Koya is. Uh, so you uh, attach attach you stick a little piece of scrap from the auto carriage into uh, oh you've got trophy hooks you, you sort of force it onto one of your trophy hooks with your servo arm and a bit of help from a brother and then uh, pushed unceremoniously through the small gap the wheelbarrow crudely folded up passed through after you and then unfolded on the opposite side what do you can probably guess that there are likely to be more picked quarters and that they will also have likely assumed that you'd managed to dig through eventually just maybe not that fast or that quietly have we got any signs of life yet or light at the end of the tunnel uh no it's it's still a completely dark and tunnel no yes so the Still no sort of control boxes or cogitators hanging out near the walls around here? Uh, anomalous, like, wiring and such, but nothing that looks particularly useful. All right. Well, the Marines to rip every wire they see out of the walls as we pursue. That's, I mean, if you if you remember what an underground network looks like, that's going to be a lot of wires. we got chainsaws. I need to break them at one point, right? Uh, it's more that it'll just be slow going. Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. So that's slow. All right, cool. So you don't want to be, like, running through this. You want to be walking, maiming the place as you go. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In that case, I think we've done, done a little bit of this, so we'll come back to that. But let's let's go check in and see how Cusco's doing. Cusco, what are we up to? To clarify, am I, like, is this just after the battle? Yeah, just after the battle. Okay, so cool. You're a few okay. hours back in time at the moment. Like, Mackie spent a couple of hours getting lost in the castle in Fort St. Stannis. Coadalmox has spent a couple of hours like digging through rubble underground, and you're a few hours behind that, just having come off the back of your successful smashing of the, the blockade south. Right. Um, so hopefully we've rounded up some prisoners. If not, I, I would like to make that my first priority, and round up prisoners. Fair, fair. You certainly can. They're definitely going to slow you down. Uh, that, that's okay. We're, I, I'm not necessarily, well, I say initially, not necessarily uh, going on a Blitzkrieg currently. I just want to get some information. Uh, so it would help to find at least the highest ranking officer that I, I can get my hands on. 
Yeah, after it becomes clear that their forces are routed and uh, you've got a fair number of armoured vehicles that will just mow them down otherwise, you, you actually capture a number of uh, moderately senior command staff. A colonel is the highest survivor who didn't get away, who presents himself to you and uh, surrenders formally on behalf of his men. Cool. Um, right, so th- this is the open part. Um, so I don't necessarily have any social skills, but like I, I was hoping to appeal to his, I'm going to say, sense of humanity. Like If he's willing to surrender on behalf of his men, like presumably he cares about their lives to a degree. And I want to attempt to manipulate that in extension to the, those left in uh, Zalona. Um, and hopefully get information about their current situation of what was left behind. Um, and failing his cooperation to eat his brain. Oh, that's going to be it's going to be a fairly difficult charm, I'm afraid. Yeah, that, that's like why I'm kind of. I mean, I, I'd say for something like that, you're looking at charm of a fellowship at a minus thirty, but I think that makes the roll impossible. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah, I'm rolling at a one. To in, swing it into an intimidate if you mention, or I can eat your brain. Yeah. <laughs> be like, <laughs> look here. I can get all the knowledge I need by eating your skull right out your cranium. <laughs> just give me a spoon, boys. Actually, no, screw it. I don't need a spoon. I'll just bite through your fucking skull. Help me save your lives, or I will eat your brains. Pretty it's much. Fucking Jonathan Colton song right there. Okay. Yeah, I'll take... I mean, it's still appealing to his humanity, so I will take Intimidate over Fellowship at a minus 30, please. I believe in you, Carl. You can do this. Get a one. Man, we are not rolling well today. None of us are. Difficult negotiations yeah, no. are usually your speciality. Yeah, right. Um, you know what? Like, no. I'm no. Make it just for the rolls. You you do your best to appeal to the uh, to the colonel, uh, but oh unfortunately, my God. Really? what's the doff on that? Uh, that would be seven. Seven. Yeah. No. He he um, straightens up in the face of of death and informs you that the uh, the people of Zalona do not surrender. Not without a fight. Um, that's wonderful. I'm presuming there are also other officers like present currently that were captured? Yeah, you've got perhaps a dozen mixed command staff. Wonderful. I would like to... Well, actually, it's like, hold on, Colonel. I respect your bravery and your loyalty to your people, but I also have loyalty to my people. At which point I'm just going to grab his skull in both hands and crack it like an egg. He dies instantly and relatively painlessly. Cool, and yeah, uh, proceed to munch the brain right in front of his uh, fellow command staff. They react with utmost horror, more than one immediately beginning to vomit. They've seen the uh, the charred horrors of war. They've seen many men uh, and women that they knew and trusted and even loved die in just the last hour or so. Not even that, the battle lasted like I think 10-20 minutes, it was fairly quick, as your offensive smashed through their improvised defense. But they were not prepared for this, for you to take off your helmet to reveal an all-too-human face, engage in civilized, rational diplomacy, albeit with a strangely barbaric threat, and then follow up so viscerally in front of them, making eye contact with each in turn as you slurp down the brains of their commanding officer. Oh, boy, there's part of me that's just like, oh, I was like, oh, man, I wish I had some fava beans and a nice Chianti, but, like, of course, that wouldn't really... Okay. No one knows who Hannibal Lecter is! Collector of the ancient pit tapes. <laughs> Hannibal Lecter, yeah, that's, uh, that's your company uh, color bearer, right? Standard bearer, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Good old, good old Hanny. It's on the ship with, uh, with Captain Carpy. Carpy and Hanny. Hanny and Carpy? Yeah, Hanny oh, and Carpy. What a sitcom duo. Yeah, you know, Carpy's a bit bumbling, Hanny's a bit more competent, trying to keep him on track. Anywho, horrifying brains eating. The next most senior uh, steps forwards, gives you her rank. Strange, you don't recognise it, but presumably that means she was beneath the colonel. And, uh... What do? She looks you in the eyes, matching your gaze, a steely resolve writ large across her face. Well, I mean, I I was going to digest the brain for information. Like, 
Does that take time? No, it's more or less instant. Uh, what type of information were you hoping to get? Uh, there's pretty much the same stuff I was asking about before, like the remaining forces and troop distribution at Zalona. Uh, any potential, uh, what's the word, uh, contingency plans that they may have for attacks or defensive plans. Um, and any other, like, I say, specialized command protocols. Exact troop distributions are difficult to get from the sort of flashes of insight and picture memory that you retrieve via your Omofa gear from eating another human's brains. But general forces, you do get an impression of a heavily militarized, and more, more than that, a very proudly militarized town, uh, with a lot of the defenses being concentrated around the void-shielded docks. The people, in your impression, are stubborn and proud. In many ways, ideal candidates for either the army or even the Astartes. It's be sad. Yeah, I mean, you'll come from, uh, what do we call it, Mesoic? Fuck, I knew I'd write this down and then not remember it. Scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. Miserica, there we go. You, you come from Miserica, with its uh, many ancient dockyards, albeit not even slightly working ones. You feel a, a strange kinship with these people. The, they almost seem like your ancestors of old. <laughs> What do, Carl? Um, so this is stuff that, again, I'm not necessarily sure I would know of like, unless I've been an, apprised of the information, but uh, the relative rustic forces, do they have, like, a navy in what I'm going to call the Gulf? Uh, the, the, it's the Bight. Uh, but yes, no, they 100% do. Zalona is the major naval base in the Bight. Uh, you would remember this from the oh, briefing. No, ra- uh, yeah, no, I'm saying, like, the Rastics, do they? Oh, have the Rastics, right. sorry. Um, no, there is a token garrison in Rastics, Mark. Uh, they do not, and the garrison, like, set sail with everyone they could carry the second the riot started. Okay. Well, I was hoping we could possibly get a blockade, but, like, if, and yet, no, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> no, you'd have to capture ships from somewhere, unfortunately. Yeah, Okay. Well, um, for the prisoners that we do have, at least the high-ranking ones, um, going to have a, a small force sent back to Zaragot with the uh, other prisoner camps and have them posited there. Cool. Uh, you, I would say captured quite a few, as you, you had basically a couple of regiments formally surrender. Um, so they'll need a moderately substantial force to escort them back to Zaragot. I'm doing neither full torture nor full murder. I, I'm, like, bridging the gap between of murder torture or torture murder. I'm not sure which. Yeah, Benji with your cowardice asking in chat like you're not here. Uh, yeah, no, he's actually, like, trying to kill the minimum amount of people. Credit where it's due. Carl experiments on his own side, not righteous, uh, righteous, not noble enemies. But I don't want to know what it's like where you are. That doesn't sound fun. Um... But yeah, um, so uh, like, well, you, you would know the amount of people that are currently there in your mind sort of thing, so whatever the minimal safe amount to escort them back, like that, that's what I want to go with, but like regular uh, army dudes. That's fair. Okay, so we'll say you split off like, I don't know, maybe a thousand troops or so from uh, your remainder, which is I think like... What's that? You've got 25,000 remaining, so 1,000 is... Oh, um, strip them of their uniforms and weapons as well, right? Yes, 100%. Um, cool. I would say that's part of, like, standard presentation. Uh, <laughs> you have them escorted back up to Zaragot. It's going to be difficult with this damn storm that seems to be blowing in ever since the orbital bombardment starting to blanket you from the north, lashings of rain flooding south, Rain bringing not just water, but also thick ashen sludge. Okay, what do? Um, of the uh, uniforms and weapons confiscated, I would like to dress up as many of my army dudes that are remaining in those uh, uniforms and equipment. Yeah, you can you can certainly get that sorted. Cool. Um, so this is going to be my overarching plan. Um, but like uh, I say, ultimately it would take time. Like so, I'm going to use the storm as partial cover as well as wait for nightfall. Have um, a load of like the ones that are dressed up 
like look shoddy and like presumably all the like gear is like unwashed at this point, shall we say? Mm. Um, so basically, have them disguise as uh, retreating forces that have made their way back to Zalona, and then use them to ambush or like at least make distraction as close as possible. Um, and then kind of try and blitzkrieg with the main force after them and push as many as possible back into the void shielded zone because that seems like it would be their natural void fallback point if they do get breached. Um, and then just kind of like stuff them out. That's quite fair. Okay, Cusco, I will take. I think this is going to be command. Uh, command over intelligence, please. It's a it's a robust plan, but it is also quite. Uh, multi-stage, even as it's just about as many stages as it needs to be. So I'll say at a minus ten, please. Oh, squeak to failure. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take that. What? Oh. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. 53 re-roll to 97. What's the doff on that? We've only re-rolled upwards today. That's yeah. Nice. I, um, stop re-rolling now. Uh, that, that's a uh, four degrees of failure, man. Night begins to roll in. You've been quietly driving the, uh, the soldiers in their captured uniforms ahead of you, making it look like you're harrying a retreating force. <laughs> so that at least, you know, maybe from the air or over Vox, it'll, it'll seem more realistic. But by the time you reach the outskirts of Zalona, <laughs> The storm is fully overhead. Contact with the Obsidian Heart is intermittent at best. And it's only as you begin your plan that you realize you've been thoroughly outflanked. Zalonan forces begin cutting in from all sides, to your rear, around you, even into the troops in the front. It's unclear at what point they penetrated your ruse, but now, in the darkness, beneath the storm, you are surrounded on all sides, with no air cover, no easy orbital cover, and limited ammunition. What do? It was a really good plan, Carl. I'm so sorry you got that many doff. That was atrocious. Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't think it would go that badly with the reroll. I thought, like, you know, like, 50-50, not terrible. Like, yeah. I mean, that just bent me over. Yeah, that was utterly abysmal. It's not that serious a situation for you and your dozens of marines, it is probably a much more serious situation for the army units. Yeah. Fighting your way clear is not going to be at all that difficult for you. Fighting your way clear without the Soviet Salyateers getting massacred, on the other hand, is. Like, cause I really didn't want to just start sacrificing them willy- Like, don't get me wrong, I'll, I'll happily sacrifice them if it's, like, a good plan sort of deal, you know? Yeah. Like, but I'm not just going to be like, yo, guy, stand in front of me because I don't want to get shot. Lives of the Emperor's currency, spend them well. Especially when they're your veterans. These are not your conscripts. These are your... I think they're even your elite troops. Because, yeah, we're down to, like, half of the force anyway. Yeah, your casualties are currently at... In fact, your fatalities are at 48%. No, I think it was casualties. Casualties at 48%, of which a fairly yeah. high proportion are fatalities. Uh, yeah, I'd say I really didn't want to get the rest of them, like... Well, uh, oh, well. it's, it's, uh, so they're your elite troops, but they're not your most veteran troops. Army Group Gamma is still going, and they are your more veteran troops. Oh, okay, then that's all right. Like, I mean, so long as it's not just me completely fucking over the whole army. Well, I mean, even if it is, like, they, they kind of delegated this to you whilst everyone else went off on shenanigans. I mean, I suppose I can just fall back on the, yo, I'm just a medic. You shouldn't have given me command. I, I, I relinquish command to you, nearby sergeant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, is that an option? Uh, technically, yes. You're not part of the command structure. You can relinquish command at any time. Oh, I'm so tempted now. <laughs> I'm just start legging it off into the darkness. <laughs> Cowardice is not likely to do you well in the in the Legion, I'm afraid. Yeah, no. Uh, like, unfortunately, with like planning. Like, in the wind now, all I'm, like, thinking of is just try to make a spearhead, like, frontal push towards Zalona and just hope that we break through. I would say you're not going to have too much trouble with that. As the fighting's starting to get close quarter, these soldiers, the same soldiers who near hours ago, I suppose half a day at this point, 
were uh, engaging in the mass slaughter in Zaragot, many of them still drenched in blood, gore, and half-flensed sloppily skin, feel their ire begin to rise. If you don't give relatively coherent and strongly successful orders to your space marines soon, they're gonna sort of fly off the hook and just throw themselves into nighttime melee. Which is not likely to do the Sony and Salieteers any favors in the dark either, as your friend and uh, friend, the uh, friend or photo targeting, I don't think, includes the army particularly well. Uh, yeah, like I say, just like go with effectively the same plan we used last time that seemed to happen to work at that point. And just, yeah, spearhead towards Zalona and try and break into the city. Okay. Attempting to rally your men through the dim and the dark. I will take charm over fellowship at a plus zero, please. <laughs> oh, right, let's see how many doff we get on this, eh, lads? Uh, that's still four degrees of failure. Four degrees of failure. Your squad rally around you. Sans, Jeff, Brother Jeffus, and... Brother Samachus, who are lost into the night, and otherwise the Vox begins to light up with battle cries. As your oh, Marines, no. eager for combat and conflict, loose themselves into the fray. Oh no! <laughs> with their oh, yeah. visors and their auto sensors, they have night sight and are not particularly impeded by the thick, sludgy rain, nor is the marshy churned up farmland particularly bad for their servo-powered and gen-enhanced muscles. Oh no. But for the Solian Salioteers and the enemy army, 40 raging berserkers loosed into their ranks in the closeness and the dark, as both sides are entirely convinced that they have to stand and fight here, or else die, is, uh, is not great. So yeah, I'm literally banging my head against the wall right now. Duty drives the mortals. Duty for the Imperium, or duty for Marotha. But in either case, they intend to stand and die. In the cold, and the wet, and the dark, and the mud. I will take a... Between the encirclement and your own marines, we'll call it a d20 plus 20 for casualties, please, Carl. Oh, fuck me. For our marines? Not for the marines. No, nah, for the oh. regular dudes. Fuck. Oh. I thought there was a chance to lose every fucking marine there. <laughs> I'm rolling so high. Cool, cool. So that's mm-hmm. right. uh, we are it's up. the idea of Benji just trying to work so hard right now, but there's a vein pulsing somewhere in his forehead. Yeah, sorry, to, to give Benji the usual Dawn of War heretic. Yeah, am I going to have to roll to resist having another aneurysm once I hear about this, aren't I? That sentence doesn't make sense. Jesus Christ, we might have just lost the Solent almost entirely. And we kind of have at this point. We're at nearly yeah, 90% casualties. And for the record, he's not totally correct. You're 83% casualties, which is nearer to 80% than 90. But he is mostly correct, yes. Yeah, well, there's on the record that, like... This is part of why I just, like, play joking, sort of, like, role-play, because when I try to be serious, like, this is what happens most of the time. I don't think this is at all on you, Carl. The role-play's been fine. The, the, the roles are what have gone against you, and... Yeah, that was a sweet-ass plan. Yeah, it was it was a good plan, and even even then, like, it was circumstances that fucked you. You and your... So you've entered Elysium, and you frenzy... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was funny, though. <laughs> uh, the fucking younglings moment. So, you and your squad break into Zalona. The good news on your end is is that you are through most of the fighting here, I would say. I'm even going to put you back on the map. You, you basically lost command over Army Group Delta. The uh, Solient Salieteers are holding. They're not breaking, but they're not organized. Come morning, we'll see who's left hoping that the storm has abated, which it won't have. <clears throat> but uh, but you were through to the prepared defensive positions of Zalona, who were expecting a large army, if that, uh, and are unprepared for a tactical squad 
of eight Astartes and an apothecary. I think that's probably a good time to zoom back over to Mackie. Hello. Mr. Mackie. It's you and your two favourite Havocs lost in Fort St. Stannis. What do? Um, I'm assuming that Adepts of Starters have training for this sort of situation. Yes. What do you want to know about your training? Um, is what is the best course of action? I have common law steps to start and scholastic law primary imperialist. So, so now would be a situation where you would say, okay, we mustn't split up for the record because you now have proof that it's a bad thing to do and there wasn't any indicator of that previously. Unless you've seen copious episodes of Scooby-Doo on the ancient holotapes, which I think is unlikely. Uh, can I boost the power on my Vox? Yes, you can, and even try, and you're getting nothing. This is... You should at least be rage, uh, raging, raising the Obsidian Heart. You are either being blocked, or someone has blown the Obsidian Heart out of orbit, or it's completely left the world. And in the latter case, you wouldn't notice. In the former case, you definitely have felt the shockwaves. Right? Right? <clears throat> Your training suggests that you should look to find somewhere open, and ideally high up. But honestly, really since, you, since you entered... Uh, since you entered the castle, you've had trouble finding anywhere outdoors at all. You seem to be lost in an endless, winding maze of corridors and mild rooms. So, I have Scholastic Law, Age of Technology. Uh, can I see if I can find... Now, I assume there's something built into the stonework and is more like a Faraday cage than anything else. But, yeah, can I uh, just, you know, using my Astartes knife, like, punching a wall real hard, just trying to like, break apart a couple of walls, or even through the walls that I've already blown open. I will take... See, sorry. Uh, see if I can come across any evidence of a, of a Faraday cage or some sort of blocking of, of Vox signals. I will take Scholastic Law, Age of Technology over Strength, please. Your muscles count. Cool. Uh, in which case, then that's 50 or under. Do I get my standard plus 20 to all strength tests? Yes, I, I did say your muscles count. Oh, okay. So, oh, amazing. So that's uh, plus 70. That's over 70 then, right? I believe so. Yeah. And then if I succeed in this extra degrees, yeah, I make it um, with something like... Uh, how many degrees of success is that? That's 40, 50, 60, 70. So that's three degrees. Really so that's six degrees of success then, because I have times two on my strength bonus. Also. Oh, natural bonus. strength. Yeah, I get times two to my natural strength. I think right. you I think you. Add... Uh, it. Yeah, oh, you just had it. Okay. Right, yeah. Yeah. Five, you don't want Okay, fair enough. Yeah, uh, yeah, in which case, I'm... five DOS. It takes you a surprising amount of effort, like an uncanny amount of effort. Like, you have to get one of the other Havocs to help you lever a, a loose looking brick out of the wall to actually manage to pull something loose. Beneath it isn't mortar or more bricks. Instead, on the other side is a silvery circuit board like substance which seems to shift and ripple as you look at it. Mm -hmm. With five degrees of success, and a bit of limited additional testing involving combat knives and other elements of rotten, shattered furniture that you pick up and sort of probe into it, you determine you are dealing with some form of inner liquid coating, presumably secreted, secreted, secreted throughout the assorted walls of the castle. It's not a tomb world, Benji. <laughs> We're not doing Necrons in 30k. They don't awaken for 10,000 years. Okay, not the first time. Not, do not the first time. So. Although I suppose just because they don't awaken for 10,000 years doesn't mean you couldn't awaken them 10,000 years earlier. It doesn't really make a difference from their end. <clears throat> yes, uh, so it's a shimmering circuit board-like substance. A little bit of uh, testing confirms that this is certainly what's interfering with your Vox, and as you walk and notice that it changes your perspective, and indeed seems to mess with your all specs the closest, uh, the closest, the closer you get to it. You can tell this uh, this substance, whatever it is, this Archaeotech, presumably, is messing with the dimensions or the Euclidean space within the castle. Um, hmm, I don't know. This is difficult because I'm thinking potentially I can. Uh, can I use 
maybe logic to try and figure out. Um, yeah, or awareness maybe to figure out how I can use its properties against itself. I would or actually. Can I ch- I'm sorry. No, you go. You go first. You go. I was going to say, I, like you know, that there's a garrison in the castle. I think knowing vaguely at least what's up, logic is probably a, not a bad one. Logic over intelligence would be fine here because you're you know that this castle is manned, which logically means that there must be a safe way to traverse it, and you can vaguely see. Even if you don't know how it works, why it works, or exactly what it's doing, what it is that's causing you the issues. Hmm. I'm wondering as well, maybe... Um, you know what? I want to do a... See if I... Uh, I want to see if I can do like a quick circuit. Take four left turns when I can, right? And I and just mark the walls with, um, with like my fingers, like scratch them or something like that. And I just kind of want to see what happens. It, it's not like a perfect square, I'm afraid, so taking four left turns isn't guaranteed to get you back to where you yeah, were. Totally, totally. But I can just, once I've done four left turns, I can just walk the reverse back and see what happens. Well, you'd think so, but you've actually tried reversing your steps. Would have been one of the first things you did. And this place, sorry, I feel like I can hear myself echoing on something. Test, test, test. Maybe not. Uh, yes, and even reversing your steps... The marks aren't there, and a lot of areas of room seem subtly different. Not completely different, like you walk out of the room and suddenly they've changed, but dimensions are off. Sometimes new doorways are there, or matted, destroyed furniture is gone or added. Mm-hmm. Can I... Yeah, I'm going to see if I can use logic then. Let me see if I can figure out a way... I also have forbidden law weaponry. I don't know if that would help in this case. I would say not in this instance, but it's a valid ask. Uh, yeah. I'm saying yes. I will take like logic over intelligence at a plus 10, please. Cool. Plus 10, so that is 45 or under. Oh, and I don't have any fates to end. Oh. What's your doth there? Uh, that was only 45 or under, so 40, 50, 60. 45, 55, 65. So, uh, Two degrees of failure. You have been traversing the castle for hours at this point. Hours and hours and hours. You are almost, in fact, certain that you might be getting close to morning. It's more by accident than uh, actual intent that you stumble across a room with a corpse. And, happily, a fresh corpse. A fresh corpse blown apart by bolter fire. A speedy check shows you that it's a, a local, a Marothan, from the uniform. He's been dead for 30 minutes, an hour maybe. Mm-hmm. Or two. Does my inbuilt or specs or my, my suit sensors, are they able to track any blood splatters that are, uh, yeah, sort of, I guess, gory, detritus left behind as my space when he's walked through with whatever bits of a uh, person coated them. They lead you directly to what is now a wall. Directly to a wall. Okay, I would like to blow through the wall or just punch through it. I don't need to spend ammo. Uh, I mean, you actually might if you'll recall. You've got that silvery substance on the other side. Proof. Okay, yeah, I'm going to um, earthquake it. Okay. What's the damage on that thing? Uh, so, one second, I have the wall. So, I can either do a focus beam, pin an enormous target, has to make a minus 40 strength test, does 1d10 impact damage. Once pinned, target takes 1d10 impact damage per round to 2d10 rounds. Or I can do a broad beam, everything caught in the blast are 1d10 rounds, must make a minus 30 strength test to be thrown, and take 1d10 impact damage. I'm going to say the focus beam makes more sense here. Yeah, I know that you can do the broad beam easily when it's a building. So, it's... I roll a 1d10 for the, for the normal damage, and then it takes that for 2d10 rounds. And then I run out of one clip, essentially. Okay, um, it's got graviton or something, doesn't it? So, like, armor value counts against itself. Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Let me just, I have the little different thing on me. Yeah, graviton is usually take 18 points of damage or something. So it actually only has the special blast 5. It doesn't have graviton buttons to it, but maybe that's because the earlier rule books don't come with graviton. Oh no, seismic, wait, is it a seismic? There's a graphing cannon I have, yeah. There's a graphing cannon. 
Let's have a look. Uh, oh, yeah, That's Graviton Graviton. isn't in the thing. Yeah, it's just the last five in there, in Rights of Battle, and presumably in, in, in Death Watch Standard. Yeah. Um, cool. Um, unfortunately, I don't think your gun is, is much good against it. Your... Um, but it's also, uh, the, it, it is, once it takes 1d10 damage, it takes 1d10 damage for 2d10 rounds. So it does 2d10 times 1d10. Yeah, but those are still separate hits. Yeah, but that would still chip down health eventually, right? Well, I mean, depending on armor value. Um, I mean, well, okay, well, let's see how much how much you do, because I suppose with 20, arguably. Uh, give us yeah. give us your damage roll. Cool, so, so I do 2d10 rounds. Well, no, I do the initial 1d10, I think, of damage. Wow. Yeah, you ain't doing shit, mate. It, and then works. once pinned, uh, target is 1d10 impact damage per round, ignoring armor. Ignoring armor for One. 2d10 rounds. Oh, ignoring armor. There we go. So that, and then so now, now I roll the 2d10. So this is how many, this is how many rounds it takes damage for. So eight rounds. And I roll 1d10. I do that, this eight times then. Ignoring, um, armor. So four. Three, so that's four, five, six, oh, seven, brutal. seven, eight. There you go. Oh, I get righteous fury, I suppose, in that one, or zealous hatred, or whatever it's called. I don't think you get it on subsequent damage rolls, right? Because it's it's not like a. Well, maybe you would. Technically, this counts as an individual damage roll per round, but it's a wall, so it can't fight back. Well, I mean, you hope. I mean, you, you know, you're not wrong. You are not wrong. You are not wrong. Cool. So you're there with your Archaeotech gun blasting for what feels like far, 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 far too long. This... This wall should have crumbled by now. It's only at the... How many rounds was it? Eight. Yes. So yeah, so 80 seconds. seconds. It's only in the last sort of 20 seconds or so of that that it starts to show visible damage and then promptly begin to crumple in on itself. As it does, you hear an all too human moan from somewhere nearby, but you also sense a struggle to pin it, almost as though it comes from all around. The wall in front of you is extremely damaged. You could probably shoulder barge your way through, you think. However, your mind flicks back to the way that the almost liquid, silvery, metallic circuit boards stuck to the objects you uh, probed into the wall. What do? I'm going to investigate the noise of the moan. Was that the human, the dead corpse? Was that the corpse behind me waking up? Nope, that was almost all around you. A kick of the corpse confirms that its ribcage is still blown out. It's still dead. I'm going to ask if my other members of my team heard that. They confirmed that they did, Brother Lieutenant. Is there any rotting furniture or anything like that? Yeah, quite a bit. Actually, I would like to check the corpse. Does it have any sort of devices on it? No. Or anything? It does not. Nothing, no devices of any kind. Which uh, suggests to your brain that there must be some technique to this. Okay. Does, uh, does he have any anything on him? Uh, he's got, like, a uh, pack of... God, what do they call cigarettes in this world? Like it? Low sticks, thank you. Um, he's got a pack of like half chewed, half smoked low sticks. Um, he's got like a, a local pattern las gun, which has been smashed in half by what looks like an Astartes boot print. Um, okay. Assorted minor person gear, nothing, nothing particularly special. Oh, I would like to throw the corpse at the wall hard enough to break the wall. Uh, God, we don't have athletics over strength, do we? We don't have athletics. Um, I think so. Do we have throw? <laughs> Probably no. No, uh, no, apparently not. No. I, it looks like it would be straight strength. Maybe? God, it's so weird not having athletics. Uh, Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I can't see anything that sort of... So what would do it, really? Yeah, just give me a flat strength in that case. Your muscles count. Cool, so plus seven, so it's plus 27, so you're under. Wow! Holy fuck! Two degrees of failure. Oh my god, what is today? 
You know, right. huck the corpse at the wall. It impacts and then begins to absorb into the circuit board. Say what? Oh. Slowly spitting out non-biological components, bits of plastic, an ID, what appears to be a contact lens. But everything organic is eaten into the circuit board as the wall slowly repairs itself with the corpse of the Marothan. So earlier when I was charging through it, um, we were blowing up bits of it. Um, it wasn't, we were damaging and we weren't being sucked in for whatever reason. Uh, wait, did we actually charge through it? I thought it was, I thought I said it was. You, just... you said, you said at some point I was blowing through a couple of walls at the very beginning. Oh yeah. To try and find much. my squad. Uh, yeah, we'll say you, you didn't get sucked into it, but you also blew like fairly clearly through it. Mm-hmm. Or at least didn't come across this circuit wall stuff that early. So as the wall's repairing itself, was I was I able to see through to the other side? No, not really. It kind of stuck. Uh, the corpse stuck into the silver circuit wall and then began to repair. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you managed to... Do- and and the, the walls that you blew through earlier as well, they, they were less tough than this silvery stuff. You didn't notice it as you walked through. And then it seemed to... Uh, they just collapsed like most walls that you've shoulder barged in your long history of shoulder barging. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, I wonder if I can shoulder barge the wall before I finish the turn, and that does raise the question, is it just going to absorb my armor? You did say it spit out. out. I'm sorry. I was going to say the same thing, I think. Uh, yeah. it spit out non-biologic. Non-biologic. And I suppose if, it, if, if we're all sealed, then it can't get into us, so... Yeah, it's probably. only biological. Hey, you know what, yeah, yeah, I'm just going to make a straight shoulder charge, and I'd like to have my two... Crew members help me as well. Not two, two members of the squad. We all just charge at the same time, or as many of us can abreast, shoulders forward. Yes, brother, lieutenant. All right, straight strength, please. Uh, yep, plus twenty. So I have that. Oh my god, off by one. Uh well, um, I, don't, I think it's off by one. Though. Yeah, it's off off by literally so one degree of failure. But only just. Ollie, allow me to be the first to say, wah, wah, wah. Yeah, I know, right? So. You know, I'm just going to roll a couple of D hundreds just to get all the bad luck out of my system. That's entirely. Uh, like, <laughs> see, it was a 73. Get a one. There we go. I'm back to normal now. Now I feel like I'm back to normal. I'm not going to be back to normal. <laughs> oh, oh, no, 35 no. could have been something good. <laughs> really? Yeah. All right. So. Right. You and the Marines charge into the wall and then directly through the wall. Silver circuit board splatters over you and you hear an almighty shriek. As you come to, not quite a dead stop on the other side, but slow a little bit, you see the walls ripple around you, and indeed the floor, and that ripple becomes a yawning cavern. I will take a a speedy adge roll, please. Um, Uh... I suppose it's acrobatics? Yeah, acrobatics of Adge, please. And can I get one from Creed and Carl as well on behalf of the Marines with you? I don't have acrobatics trained. Do you not have it as basic? Oh, yeah, it's a special one. Oh, it's sorry, an advanced yeah. Okay. yeah, well, in that case, big rip, mate. It's untrained. Got so minus 20 on this, 30 or under, 96, and I have no faith. Okay. If only you had that 35. <laughs> <laughs> and that's. Motherfucker! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's it. Is that, uh. That's the other D-100. Marines. Yeah. Yeah, but one, one's a. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. So one of the other Marines falls into the yawning chasm with you. I'm coming, brother lieutenant! <laughs> I'm livid with rage right now. The other one speedily jumps into the air. His chainsword. Uh, chainsword, sorry. His, um. Oh, he's a heavy. He's a fucking devastator. It's tied to him. His heavy bolter hangs limply by its ammo belt and harness. As his arms spread out on either side of the wall, his legs inhumanly flexible, likewise spread out on either side of the wall, and he exists, (laughs) just kind of stood over the yawning pit until the ground eventually reasserts itself. Did you just stack overflow on your anger there, Carl? It's not calm as acceptance. <laughs> okay. That's probably a good point to switch over to Clavelmas. 
Oh. I'm so sorry, Carl. But also, thank you. That's no problem. <laughs> why, why thank you now? You're separated from one of your guys. Yeah, but like he, he saved one of them. I have no idea what's fucking going to happen to me. So, like, I, I don't know. And I mean, that one dude may come around and save him in return. That's true. Exactly, yeah. I heard the echo there. Why do you mean? I just didn't hit those up. Ah. Rage? Kill Apple Mox. Nope. You have been steadily destroying the, uh, the Maglev way. Going at a snail's pace as a result. Hoping to sever any camera lines. Wouldn't you sever them up the circuit from where they are, though? Well, I assume they've got to run somewhere, right? Yeah, but if you're advancing, if it's it's a tunnel, so you can only come at it from one or two ways most of the time. And yeah. if you're advancing up from, like, we'll say the south, and the lines are going north, if you sever a line south of the camera, it's still going to have lines going north until you get to the camera. Yeah. Not that was my only aim for cutting the cables. Sure, it's fine. Yeah, you're mostly separating, like... <laughs> It's a good thing you're grounded in those fucking suits because they're separating a lot of high voltage cables with fucking chainsaws. So you're all like, your marines are gently smoking. Right. Static clinging to you, giving you all a thick sheen of dust. The four who are on that duty, whilst one is wheelbarrowing you forwards. He, he leans down. Brother. Brother Tech Marine? What's your yes, opinion? brother. Battle box will do fine for now. Might we not go faster if we simply ran? I suppose. I was hoping to increase our chance of avoiding detection slightly, but you're right, I am getting a bit bored, and glory's got to be close by now, boys. Let's go! It's the fact that you drove, like, cross-continent and then decided to start walking, committing petty vandalism at the very last moment. Oh. Okay. On behalf of your marines, I will take a strength check, please. Their armor does count, so I think that's a net of 40 plus 20, 60 around them. Bada boom. Three dots. I'll also command them to stop it for three light. <laughs> I yes. have a plan to aid our advance. <laughs> Dodge the maglev. You jog at full speed, uh, at fullest a speed as you can make, make go, <clears throat> up the tunnel, being wheelbarrowed by your faithful lackey, until you see the very first shred of light. You've gone through more than a, f- uh, gone past more than a few picked quarters, but at the moment you seem to at least be banking on. It's very dark in the tunnel. You have fucked at least some of the electrics. The glow globes are slightly screwed down here. Uh, and you're hopefully going fast enough that they haven't noticed you on the picked cords yet. What do when you see that light in the far, far distance? Perhaps two, three hundred meters away in a straight line? Oh, muted. I'd like to advance to about 150 meters away. Unless there's any resistance met for me. You can't see any resistance. But assuming that you're coming up on a station, it would presumably be constructed to enfilade you rather than put in the tunnel itself. Sure. Uh, cool. What what do when you get to 150 meters? Brothers, ensure your audio dampeners are active. I shall let out a dehabilitating screech and then we shall charge onwards to glory. How the fuck does your screech thing work? Uh, mechanically, it just makes everyone's actions only a half action, if they can hear. Oh, it's actually only 30 meter radius. I would say that probably is extended in a tunnel. You've got to, like, RP the screech, though. What? No, oh, please don't. What oh, page is it? Doesn't hate me. It doesn't let me screech anymore. Oh, I'm 118. 118. <laughs> I'm so, so many of my noises discord. <laughs> <laughs> what a phrase. Uh, what is it called? Feedback screech. Ah, okay. Oh, I see it. Mm. Just breathe as hard as you can. Okay. Yeah, I would say you can probably do it as like a continuous a continuous action. Um, cool. I will take... What do you do? It's just reflexive. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so it's not like you need to roll to do anything. You can do a continuous feedback screech. Why the fuck not? Well, I suppose you've got to run through it and keep it up. Um, tech use, maybe? Yeah, screw it. Tech use over, I guess, strength uh, at uh, plus 20, please. Strength plus 20. Oh, that's just a one degree. Successo. Oh, I guess I'll get an extra success from unnatural strength. You can't think. I think it's two from unnatural strength, isn't it? No. Go from a one to a three. Cool. Yeah. So you start screeching. You don't stop screeching. And other all star lyrics besides. Just thinking of the noise marine now. It is an unholy noise. Your marines alongside you. Chainsaws out, still gently smoking from the furious electric current, covered in dust and grime almost blind from the amount on their visors, begin to charge forwards, including building up a fair amount of momentum on the wheelbarrow. Excellent. I want to be wheelbarrowed through a man. Alright, well, you know what? Fuck it. Roll strength on behalf of your bearer and let's go into this scene. Strength on behalf of your bearer, please, and well, I'll take weapon skill on behalf of your, your squad. Okay, strength. Uh, well, they play 40 plus 20. That's a DS6 death. Yes. And then weapon skill. Oh, that'd be three failures. Just base. Okay. The six of you push into the, uh, as it turns out, station. Directly underneath, you assume, the Marotha Metroplexic. It's heavily defended must once have been a public station, but it has recently and rapidly been converted into uh, a fortified position intended to hold off someone just such as yourself. Now, it's unclear whether you exactly escaped the cameras, or if you uh, were totally expected, but they're definitely alerted once you start feedback screeching. At the same time, being alerted when being feedback screeched into is still a fairly debilitating situation. And as a result, you're able to simply blast into this I would say call it a couple of hundred Marothans worth of defended position they have some brand of local multi-laser and heavy stubber up arrayed against you and begin peppering the chamber I have returned work hey. oh. you interesting <laughs> it's not my fault it was my fault I mean, who put the medic in charge? Young Nicholas. Young Nicholas put the medic in charge. I think he did, actually. But in this instance, it's Captain Carpy put the medic in charge. So really, it's on Harry. This this is the look of disappointment in you all. I don't don't see it. Oh, sorry, I don't have a come on because, you know, potato. Yeah, it'll melt, you can do that. (laughs) <laughs> it is sternly shaking his head and wagging his ah, finger. Let's see. No. Has he grown the moustache back like yet? No, uh, yet. Nah, it's like a five o'clock shadow sort of level. Oh. But the, for me, the five o'clock shadow is mostly moustache. I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke, but it's honestly just tragic. No, as as, as you can see from the camera, I have a little bit here, and then the rest of my five o'clock shadow is just moustache. I, I can't. I don't have a camera, I'm afraid. Well. So. Oh right, on Discord, other people no. are snips. You look so young. It's 20-year-old yeah. Benji. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> so, you charge into the fortified position. Multi-la- uh, multi-laser, ordinary las fire, and heavy stubber fire beginning to pepper your squad as you go. They form up, forming a defensive uh, shield around you. And it's with some alarm you note two of your brothers go down. It's unclear whether they're dead but they certainly drop. The two in front of the wheelbarrow, however, stay up. You go careening as they peel away to reveal a bank of sandbags in front of you and several dozen armoured soldiers. Careening into the bank of sandbags, your wheelbarrow ploughing straight through one. How many degrees of success did you say you got? Uh, on the wheelbarrow, it was just one. Just one, cool. So you don't go through a man, but you do go onto a man and then jam in his screaming near corpse your uh, wheelbarrow embedded inside his now split ribcage, 
his heart gently slurping down the lip of your poor quality wheelbarrow. Excellent. Your minder, drawing his chainsword, springs into the fray, and you can hear your other two brothers nearby slaying with reckless abandon, entirely oh, given over. The box. Brothers, our primary objective is to disable the aeroplex, followed by the field, uh, the shield generators. My life is no longer your priority. Understood. And with that, you're left in a mound of screaming Marothans. All around you, blood and carnage reign. As you're using my servo arm to yeet myself bodily in random directions <laughs> filled with men. <laughs> <laughs> um, weapon skill, but you can have your strength bonuses. All right. All right, all right. All right, all right. That'll be two successes. But yeet himself with psychic powers? Oh, yeah. Let me just double-check something, actually. What does... What does Even in quadriplegia, he still serves. <laughs> look into the server oh. We have established in campaign canon that you can yeet yourself. No, we with, have that. That's, uh, that's not what I'm. That's not what I'm looking at. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I was more just comparing the two. You know what he basically is. You know those little flippy dog toys that you press down and then they do backflips oh, and go yeah. yap 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 yap. He's like that. Only he's an eight foot tall killing machine with oh, that that his primary really limbs. Cool. Mech and Android use servo arm talent. Might be a um, Quick question about skill progression. So I know that each uh, class effectively has their own special thing for some doodads. Mm. I'm trying to find command, but like. I'm just... pretty sure it's a general space marine advancement, so you just need to look for the general one. That's at the very top of the. Yeah. Of the well, I've got some good news for you, Creed. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh-huh. The only snippet I found was fairly useless. No, nope, you're wrong. You're gonna, you should be super strong. You're going to like this. You roll using the servo arm strength when you're using the servo arm, which is 75. Uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, I was about to say, they should be super duper strong. I was, I was just looking to see if it had, like, I was thinking, oh, is it a full servo harness? But no, that's a separate thing. Because uh, I was wondering, like, if you're wearing someone else's power armor, if you could have soldered it up. But no, you presumably just got, like, plates or something shoved into the, the empty bits to give you some kind of ceiling. Um, but uh, Jesus Christ, it is a decent server. <laughs> oh, in fact, exceptional craftsmanship, which it is Mars and the early Great Crusade, so I guess it would be. Um, no, we didn't say that, actually. That'd be unfair. It's not like I've been giving everyone else best quality everything. To be fair, he is a tech marine. He does get the pimp stuff. Yeah, but that's this is this, the baseline tech marine is already seventy five. That is pretty pimp as is. So I'm not yeah. going to complain. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll say it's just the baseline one, but not ruling out a better one in because otherwise I'd have to give like your Nicholas best quality side so, uh, stuff. And Carl will that modify my uh, roll with Uh Yeah, because you're all because this is just using your oh, it's strength. Yeah, assuming right. it takes away my um, plus twenty bonus, I have. From being strong, so it's its own thing. It would just be one degree of success five. Uh, uh, yeah, it is its own thing. That's very true. Uh, I mean, which would have been higher? Weapon skill off of your base with the strength bonuses or servo arm uh, strength? Servo arm by 50. Three. So it's five degrees with the ser- servo arm? Uh, yes. No, four. No, you get... Because it's three, because 75, 65, 55, 45. Oh, th- no, six. Because it's got unnatural strength times two as well. Oh, I've got that one. Okay, so six. To, yeah, we'll say the server. So you're going more for <laughs> more for speed than precision. It's a target rich environment. You've got a servo arm, and uh, even with your legs, arms and legs t- uh, chopped off, you weigh over a ton, which means throwing yourself. <laughs> bodily around the environment like the nastiest ragdoll in the land is a surprisingly effective weapon in close quarters. So, so I have like empty limb armor on my suit as well, so it's going to be flying around. I guess, yeah. yeah. I Weaponize that's... the empty limbs. 
Cool, six degrees of success. You may be missing all four limbs, but you successfully break the morale of the defenders, who are completely <laughs> untrained to deal with this type of enemy, assuming it to be assuming it to be some kind of automated killing machine. They can't is there easily. Any type? Sorry. Is there any type of enemy that's trained to deal with this? Yeah, because he's, he's functionally a whirly gig with a brain at this point, so it's it's a hundred percent a thing you can be trained to deal with. But you usually don't make whirly gigs on this scale. Um, so this is terrifying, like mind-bogglingly terrifying. Uh, and also, there's two marines already punctured through, and this thing doesn't seem to die. They can't damage it with small arms fire. They can't bring the heavy gu- uh, heavy weapons to bear. And as long as they're down here, they're within range. As a result, they break and retreat. Not to say you're alone down here. There's a massive number, dozens and dozens of injured people scattered across both platforms, sandbanks destroyed, weapons overturned, occasional grenades going off as people attempt defiant last stands but can't seem to so much as pin down the violent ragdoll thing. What's your end goal here, Chris? Uh, my main goal was to help the other space marines get clear towards the aeroplex. So if everything else is cleared up, I shall just start yeeting myself towards that direction, roughly uh, northeast. <laughs> that will involve you. Tunnels. That will involve you. Yeah, climbing out of the tunnels and on the streets, yeah. you are going well, to be significantly less devastating. I will say this as well: uh, Is there a possibility, since I and my squad have infiltrated the metroplex, that I could come across him? <laughs> Or I'd be someone happy to, on my command. I'll be happy to cut to you if you and a blow. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to cut over to you. Uh, but with only with only one degree of success, I think uh, you you and especially with the way we position you on the map, you came uh, you came in like much closer to the dock. Like a wrecking ball? Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, oh. there's there's not really much chance of you coming across him. I'm afraid. Valid ask. Uh, I will say no. Um, Cool. I will double check if Carl is happy for us to do you because we got two Coapa Moxes and two Mackies in, but only one Cusco. Oh, I can't lie. I'm I'm no longer in the headspace to actually like. <laughs> but your plan it, it fell apart. I I I know how it feels, Carl. That's a good plan. Yeah. It was yeah, but his was a much more robust plan. Is the thing with fewer moving parts. If I hadn't a rerolled, then like maybe it wouldn't have been quite a massacre. Oh yeah, not even slightly. If you hadn't a rerolled, you would have at least retained control over your Astartes. Hey. If you hadn't a rerolled, it would have been more of a standoff situation. But I mean, you weren't enough. Nope. So in that case, Koya, you've taken a long, slow route into town, and night has functionally fallen at this point. You've. Uh, so you're not under the giant sludge storm that's kicked up over the western half of the continent, as opposed to the dust storm over the eastern half of the continent. Um, but you can still see it. A colossal bank of clouds on the horizon, entirely disguising the sky, and you can only just make out the form of the obsidian heart in low orbit in the far, far, far distance above. Even then, only with your auto sensors. You Which and the... I don't have because I'm not wearing. Oh, armor. yeah, that's very true. Even uh, only just with your slightly enhanced senses, with no armor, you've got no friend or foe, and no way of knowing what's happened with Clatelmox. But the worst that can possibly happen is he and his entire squad got hit by a train. And if that happened, then that's basically their fault. No, I I, I knew that he got hit by a train. No, but, again. I... Uh, oh right, because yeah. you knew he was going back into the tunnels. <laughs> Oh god! Or I don't know if he explicitly said it, but it was very obviously going to happen. I think. Is the word you use that is incorrigible? Incorrigible is arguably it. Yeah. I don't know. We just scream. Sorry. I don't know. We just scream. Race to the Metroplex at some point. I saw he was going for the boat or heard. It's fair. So you're you're fully out of contact with command at this point, but you have put us uh, put us shore quietly. That said, it's not a completely deserted area. The slight wilderness you've landed in, and you're fairly certain that you'll be seen soonish. Even out of armor, you're tall and you have very, fairly distinctive ornaments, which may or may not be very foreign to the locals. So there's a decent chance that you'll be made pretty quickly. What's your plan? Well. The overall objectives were to infiltrate the Metroplex, disable their power grid, and then start trying to take out military and civilian leadership. So my current infiltration plan now, now that we're not infiltrating in a refugee stream, 
is presumably looking for... It's unlikely that any... Maybe sewage outlets would, would be big enough to, for us to hide in and pop out of, like tiny murder gophers. Depends how their sewage system is set up, but potentially. Obviously air vents, I'm not going to say a thing. Um... Yeah, no, it's, it's if you'll recall, more like uh, almost more of a London situation than a hive situation. It, it's a number of town, large towns and villages that centuries ago forged, uh, forged, expanded to the point that they formed one major metropolitan area with a single town okay. theoretically dominated. In which case, I'm going to go with the sewers option. <clears throat> yeah, something this size has got to have robust sewers. That seems fair. So... I will take... I'll take Navigate Surface at a plus 10, please. Uh, would... Probably over Perception. I just saw my Navigate... Uh, oh. What is this? Ah, oh, there we go. Navigate Surface. Okay. That is fail. I will spend the fate point. <laughs> no, don't do it, you fool. Have you not seen the rolls tonight? Aha! Success! It's him. That he is stole the two degrees. Two degrees of success. Two degrees of success. It is not actually that difficult for you to find a major sewage outflow pipe. There was one quite close to the coastline. Probably shouldn't be flowing directly into the river, but opening it up, it appears that it's not been used in centuries. Nevertheless, or at least decades. Nevertheless, it's probably connected to the wider network somewhere, even if you might have to punch through some walls. And you and your squad begin trudging into the sludge. You may consider yourself to have <laughs> infiltrated the Marothan sewer complex. <laughs> Where are you trying to get to, and how are you trying to get there? We... The sludge trudge, yes. Thank you, Carl. <laughs> I love the idea that eventually the Emperor's going to ask us, so, so what did you successfully infiltrate? What did you successfully invade? We were like, the sewers. We did really good at it. <laughs> Promise. Well, I mean... Well, <laughs> I presume... I presume as well that if we can get to a central processing area for, ser- for the said sewers, there will be people there who know about the general infrastructure of the Marotha Metroplexing, allowing us easier access to the power grid on primary objective. <laughs> You're going to go hold some sewage treatment workers to task. Well, I was more going to punch their heads off and then eat the brain. You know, Omega Fear. I, your Omega Fear uh, does not get. Uh, Faji does not get you. Like, it gives you thoughts and memories, but they have to be relevant thoughts and memories for the person, especially recent ones, generally. So, you don't get complex... Wait, sorry. Back up. Is your plan to infiltrate, then, those locations via their sewers? Yeah, like... Oh, okay, to, I'm to following get, you. To, to, know, might, where the, to that... know where the power grid stuff is, and the easiest way of accessing oh, okay. it from below. That's fair. I misunderstood you then. That might actually work. I thought you were going to go, like, find the nearest civil servant and then eat their brains and go, haha, now I have the civil planning database Wikipedia in my head and on my tongue. Uh, uh, only if I was a blood angel. Uh, I think they're still carrion... They're still carrion eaters. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Nobody like. Let us say something. Though I've also, like, fucked the Primark discovery dates, because they all happen a lot more than, uh, a lot earlier than I meant them to, uh, or thought they would. So they're also happening a lot later for us. Uh, so I'll be carrying meters for a while longer. Mm. It's fine. In any case. Cool. Yeah, I would say that's probably another navigate surface then. Uh, I'll say this one's a plus zero. This will be a bit, bit difficult, but you can, you can follow, like, the, <laughs> where is the fresh sludge getting shipped to? That'll logically be a processing plant, and then with only a nominal amount of, you know, literal sludge shipped. That is shit. one degree of failure. <laughs> I will keep one degree of failure. We will say on one degree of failure that you do find your way, but it takes you a lot longer than you would like to. And by the time you get there, your chainsaws and bolt pistols, I assume, is what you had. I didn't bring uh, chainsaws and bolt pistols. You don't bring any weapons com- at all. No, I said combat knives and um, combat knives and last weaponry. It's less loud oh. and less obvious that we're Astartes. That's very fair. Yeah, okay, in that case, your last weaponry is at this point fucked. Uh, it's got so much poo on it. <laughs> it's just, like, unreasonably destroyed. It's basically useless, even beyond it being too small for your hands, which you could have made, like, made work, just bend yeah. the trigger guards away. The combat yeah. knives are still going, uh, but you're probably quite happy that they don't have machine spirits. 
I assume. Well, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I deliberately said don't bring chainsaws or bolters because A, they're fairly hard to hide, and B, they make a hell of a lot of noise. So if we do have to get up close and personal and kill people, it's far better for a las gun to go off because la- these people have las guns, so they're not going to automatically go, oh my god, the Astartes are in the city. Smart. I mean, they don't know you're Astartes yet. I'll probably just call you those no. bastards. They don't, but they know we have big boom boom guns no, that go back. No, it's very true. And I suppose an Astartes combat knife is still basically a short sword. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, with your obsidian pattern combat knives. Made of smooth rock. No. Uh, this would be more ceremonial, I would have thought. Basically, the way I'm looking at it is it's a giant obsidian cookery. Yeah, I can see that. Why not? And so... It's not a knife. This is a knife. Eleven of you together force your way in after much trekking and abandoning your las guns and quite a bit of dead ends. So it's been... We'll say in fairness, because it wouldn't have taken you... If we let Creed drive most of that way, it wouldn't have taken you the whole day, boat-wise. Uh, so, starting to get towards morning of the next day, which means you're at about the same time frame as everyone else. When you appear trudging out of the giant vat of processing sewage... Not even trudging, actually, because you're doing stealth things, so... The sort of... Uh, what do you call it? Not Army of Darkness... Heart of Darkness. Oh god, what we just sort of rise up yeah, from beneath it. With like <laughs> just up to eye level, taking a deep breath of shitty air, but it is at least air. One of you... Well, well we have you? multi-lungs, we can't drown, thank god. <laughs> like, I mean, but, like, you're still neck deep in shit, though. Yeah. Like, let's be honest, maybe drowning's better. Wait, is the multi lung you literally can't drown? Because it doesn't let you breathe underwater. You, know, you can breathe. You can breathe water through multi lung. One second, let me just double check this because I vaguely believe you. I va- yeah. Really? You can cool. you can breathe you can breathe water. You can still drown in other liquids, but mm. you can't. You can breathe water, and this is still water. Well, no, it's poo. It's it's much thicker than water. Like that slurry is going to be yeah. chunky. <laughs> I just finished listening to the fucking Chunky Nectar of the Gods episode as well. <laughs> Boy, this, um, this ain't that. Um, was that us, or...? That was Cartborn. Oh, yeah, I knew it sounded familiar. Ollie and his spicy fucking porridge. He fills out the poisonous or toxic In any case, things. yes. What, yeah, what you, you can... Uh, marine environments as if he had gills. Okay, so you probably breathe with difficulty in the poo, which is making swimming a lot easier, but you couldn't live down in the poo indefinitely. Like, I'm just trying to Um Yeah, I mean what do you what do you want to do here? You and your eleven other poo frog people have popped up in a giant vat of poo. No one appears to have noticed you yet. <laughs> because honestly no one was expecting this. It's only a matter of time before someone looks out to survey the field of poo and notices there are people in one of the vats. But um Well we want to exit Exit the vats and try and ascertain. Well, uh, well, I suppose first we'll ascertain whether or not um, there are any hu- valuable targets around us that can tell us the way to go to get to the power supply or near to the power supply. And you know that right now you are definitely ascertaining uh, as well. Like you're ascertaining what was in the ass. I mean, he's just I'm speedily. Yep, yep. He goes. Out he goes. <laughs> so. You can see a number of people as you swim silently to the lip of the vat, the substance bubbling and oozing around you, bits cloying to your... Do you have hair or shaved scalp? Um... Please, you shaved. know, I don't know. I'll roll for it. All right, odds you have a shaved scalp, evens you have hair. Thick, lustrous, yep. beautiful hair. Even thick, lustrous, beautiful hair it is. Your thick, lustrous, beautiful hair. The pride of third company. Matted with fecal matter. I'm just going to have to have a nice long bath when I get out of this. The problem is, is now I'm just imagining what it would be like with like crap just soaked into my hair and like, no. That would be horrible. Just no. But Coyer is a professional. <laughs> Coyer is a professional, and this is preferable to dealing with the shit that's happening away from here. 
I mean, you assume it's all going fine, right? Like, since you, you, you notice your stress levels have gone down markedly since you stopped listening to the Vox, and indeed, let your Vox be taken by someone else and driven away from you. Uh, so, would this be silent move? I'm not going to charge if, you. I'm not going to charge evaluate you Evaluate to uh, assess targets. I would say evaluate to assess targets. Evaluate over perception at a plus 20. As you blink chunks of a local vegetable matter out of your eyes. That is a pass. Okay, so... Then we get plus 10. Even do you say... Do you say a, uh, yeah, so plus 2. So do you say plus 20? Yeah. Then that is 6 degrees of success. <laughs> your eyes rapidly assess the situation. You're clearly in a processing plant of some kind. There are 8 workers on the floor. You count 2 workers in what looks like an office and someone in what looks like a private office at the very top of a uh, sort of overhanging um, area with a couple of floors that looks ultimately like a fairly not great place to work, overlooking as it does the vast shit fields. There are dozens of other vats around you, some smaller, some larger, most about your size. And maybe four or five entrances and exits to the room will do. Uh, I would like to command my marines using hand signals, which we have. Yep. We have we have thought mark. Uh, well, I suppose we wouldn't have thought mark. We'd probably have a start these battle signs. Um, yeah, you got to start these battle signs. Uh, to take out the workers on the floor as silently as possible, then work our way up to the guy at the top, remaining silent as we go. You are professionals. I am actually uh, not going to charge you a silent move for this. You're killing unaware civilians, and you prepped for this, and are coming from a thoroughly unexpected angle. <laughs> Yeah, no, nobody expects... Nobody expects nobody. the <laughs> poo-ish Inquisition. <laughs> oh, one dark heresy away from the perfect joke. One by one, you slip out of your vat. And then, padding silently, accompanied only by the occasional noise of a slight drip, which sounds thoroughly not out of place in this vast, churning, roiling ocean of mess, your squad, one by one, slips up, slips up, slips apart, stalks individual members of the floor crew and quietly murders them. Usually a man makes a lot of uh, a lot of noise as his throat's cut. But if sufficiently choked and taken thoroughly from surprise, it is possible to... Uh, Even a Astarte's hands can cover an entire human head, I can imagine you can silence a lot of it just by grabbing their face. Oh, aye. But the true kill shot... That uh, when you've got the strength to go through the, the middle bit of the skull, the part between the eyes, and you've got a sword for it anyway, and you don't have to go through the neck, grab them, I suppose top finger up a little bit, and then push the knife in from I was going to say, for my, for my one, can I be grabbing the face with the left hand, and then with the knife just going straight up the spine? Sure. Mr. That's Fancy right. Pants. You work your way into the office. The uh, local workers have just about enough time to begin to exclaim in shock as they see you enter through the front door when the uh, marines who came in through the rear massacre them, allowing you to proceed at a leisurely pace into the manager's office up top, where he quails in fear, seeing you walk up the stairs. Ah, are you lost, sir? A piece of sludge drips down and off of your naked breast. Okay, um, I really want to try killing him just by backhanding him. But equally, I think I'm going to try just throwing my knife at him and pinning him to the wall. Oh yeah, you're going to read his brain, right? Sure. Yeah. I mean, either way is fine. Uh, we'll say it's a ballistic skill if you want to do the knife thing, a weapon skill if you want to do with your strength bonus, I guess, if you want to do the um, backhand. I'm going to try and pin him to the wall because I don't want to break the brain. I mean, you can back out his chest and collapse his uh, ribcage That's properly it. fairly easily. I need, I need that brain. But also reasonable. You rolling? Yes, yes. Second. I will fate the has Fate the 90. Oh, What's the death on that? Uh, three degrees, not two. Three degrees of failure. You aim for the neck, but unfortunately he kind of reflexively goes to duck. And your knife neatly plunges through his skull, brain, and a good portion of spinal column before pinning him to the wall. It's a clean cut, 
but it will have destroyed a fair amount and make the thoughts generally messier and harder to read. You'll get information, but less out of it. Okay, in which case I would, after cursing myself slightly for my hubris, like to order all of my marines to take the brains of everyone we've killed here. Everyone gets everyone gets a brain, everyone gets a bit of information, everyone uh, then compile the information together. Oh yeah, I think it was exactly 11 people, right? Two office workers, eight on the floor, and the manager. Yeah, one brain yeah. per person. Yeah. Didn't notice that. Compile <clears throat> the information. Okay. I would say that's probably a thing to do next week so it's then fresh in your mind, right? If you are, yeah. Cool. In that case, feels like a good spot to leave it. 20 past on the dot. Does anyone have any reminders for next session? I am currently covered in poo. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, we're going to have to spend like 10 minutes explaining that to young Nicholas. I know it. Uh, do I have one for sending boys ahead? Uh, fair, fair. Yeah. Anything else? I suppose that you've got two guys has, on the ground as well. Sorry? Has Carl relinquished his command? Or is he still... He hasn't, at last check, notionally relinquished it, uh, but he has functionally lost it. He's got the eight marines of his squad who are still with him. Two marines from his squad succumb to the bloodlust. The rest are in uh, basically gore frenzy mode. They feel the skinning lust overtake them. It is a good lust. Anything else? I don't know what's up going on with Ollie. Is he trapped somewhere, or...? Oh, Ollie's doing Scooby-Doo things. Yeah, I do put head around corners, and then other heads appear above me, and they're not people I know. It's all kinds of things. Uh, yeah, I guess I'd like to remind myself that I'm potentially falling to my death. But with a fun. Fair, fair. Anything else? Um, hmm. A market distrust of walls from now on. Fair, fair. Anything else? They were shifty, but now I'm real suspicious. Uh, uh, yes. nothing. Nothing. Uh, waiting for the bloodlust to subside. And then shruggy emo. <laughs> fair, fair. Anything else? No. Well, I guess that's reasonable. Uh, feels like everyone, everyone sort of. Oh, we forgot to do Koya's fucking reminder. Koya and Co. eating brains. Oh yeah. Cool. In that case, feedback. Anything you liked? Anything you disliked? Anything you'd like to see more of or less of next time? Dislike bad rolls. I'm so sorry, Carl. Oh, that's not your fault, right? Here's everyone. Everyone's today. Oh, for some reason, Benji, like, we are seeing all our luck. I mean, I, fi I finished the entire session by not having much luck, to be fair. Yeah, but you got one successful roll, which puts you in the upper leagues. I, so I got two, technically, because yeah, I got one at the very bad. beginning. All right, let me show off. Yeah, I mean, the only role I got was not for me. <laughs> but that one guy, though, fucking arms and legs on opposite side of the corridor wall. <laughs> it's like Spider-Manning. Yeah, like, exactly. Spider-Manning it, carrying his heavy bolter as well. Just kind of, oh, no. It's like, I've been thoroughly trained for this one precise scenario. Ah, I knew specking into acrobatics would help me. <laughs> Oh, dear. This is why Marines cross train in ballet. <laughs> that would be interesting to see. I mean, it makes sense. I bet you Falcon boys do it. I mean, it does, it, like, it does make sense, right? I think I Captain, what's his thingy? Uh, Captain Carpy will be mandating everyone take up ballet dancing. Yeah, I was going to say, can we have that as a reminder? Stop. Mandatory ballet classes. Not mandatory marine ballet classes. You got a cross train. <laughs> oh man. I'll note it. Thank you. Um, cool. Any other feedback? 
how do we find the time split up this week? I, I know I was, because everyone's, it's, it's a very split party, so I was trying to do like 20 to 30 minute segments with everyone. Um, it felt fine to me, but I, I, I did get two, but it felt fine to me. I mean, you're, you're kind of one of the people I felt quite bad for, I think, because it, it meant that you were like on, a, on, then off, then on, then off. So, I mean, I, I won't lie, I mean, I did find it hard to concentrate on a on and off like that, but also, you know, it's fair enough that other people have to have a go and, and shit like that, so, um, yeah, I, I won't worry about it too much. That's, that's fair, that's good to hear. And, and like, the party is, is as split as it can possibly be, so I, I, I couldn't really have multiples of you together. No, it's pretty well, given this. You always split the party. I'll kill you. I'll kill you dead. Cool. So on the flip side of uh, time considerations, like uh, I thought you did quite well with uh, yeah. like not just the amount of time that we got, so much as like making sure the timeline linked. Mm-hmm. It's well. a lot of stuff done. I don't think anyone would disagree with me there. Oh, like rather, yeah. we got a moderate amount of stuff done per person, which felt like a lot done. I would say yeah. a lot of stuff yeah. done. I'd say it's fair. And thank you on the timeline thing as well. That that like I think it was almost more accident than anything else that it synced up quite well. Is is everyone was taking? No one was taking actions that took an hour real time or twenty minutes real time, but twenty seconds in game. And, and conversely, the same situation. No one was taking anything that took twenty seconds real time and. Uh, two days in game, so it sort of nicely synced, I guess. I mean, no one was doing the kind of shit that got the structured combat binned. Yes. Yeah. Cool. In that case, more sense. Anything anyone was narratively unclear of in that session? Is everyone following the plot? Yeah. I was going to say I lost the plot, but like <laughs> more metaphorically. Yeah, I mean. It's kind of it, the offensive on all fronts, really. You know, Rastic's mark. Oh, you! I completely didn't follow what you meant for a second there. I'll, I'll just shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh. Yes. And we now have the spooky castle subplot, which I didn't think we were going to get to. I thought you were just going to bomb it from orbit. Which we did now. Not like uh, for purpose of content. <laughs> but, I mean, that castle just... Yeah. I I mean, if we bombed it, then found out it was a cool spooky tech castle, I would have been disappointed. It's good. <laughs> Just can't win. Oh, on a narrative question, have we heard much from Rastic's Mark? How are they holding up? Uh, it's, it's, I think, still... It's day 1.5 of the riots there, so it's it's still chaos. It'll probably take them at least a couple of days to sort things out there. Long form, the rioters are going to win and they'll retain control, uh, they'll gain control over the city, but they're probably not going to be this good state to do much other than uh, well yeah they're not really going to be in a good state to do much at all after that unless you like I guess they've got like, a lot of sailors so if you captured the navy at Zalona somehow they could probably crew the ships for you it's fine it's it's just a dis- at this point it's a distraction thing where Marothans have another thing to worry about yeah I mean they've basically abandoned that like the entirety of Rastic Desic they ev- they evac everyone they could immediately and then everyone who this is half the reason everyone who's left is having issues um that is um Hoyron and Port Vorant still clinking away at each other yeah the Hoyron Principality's invasion of Port Vorant is not going well um but Port Voron is explicitly designed to resist them. Uh, it's probably going a little bit better for the Hoyrens now that the... Uh, Fire overwhelmed... Terraplex yeah, got exactly. smashed. Exactly. Even though there's a colossal dust storm in the east that's stopping them launching their planes too, they at least now have a slightly more even fight. Um, because it was the Marothans that had air superiority in that battle. Uh, so yeah, thing, and also it generally favors the attacker when you, ha- I think, when you have um, environmental conditions like that. So they're they're not having the best time, but they also are kind of prepared for crippling, grueling combat. Um, yeah, cool. which means the I guess the only other thing to update on status wise is we know that like Army Group Delta is fucked at this point. <laughs> um, Ari. Well, that's not really your fault. That was the bad rolls that did it. <clears throat> so I guess it's just then uh, Zadagot, uh, which has been fairly quiet, really. There's firestorms raging through the scrublands outside, and they're covered by that horrifying sludge. But they've descended into an awful quiet as 
people either cower inside or make to flee or have been herded into the uh, prisoner camps if they're military <clears throat> by the soldiers left there with the marines still overseeing. It's, uh, it's a time, but it's all really just depressing and the fighting's basically done there. Okay. Any other questions? Nope, fair, fair. In that case, let's do some XP. Plot progression. Does anyone feel like you made a significant plot progression this session? The Metroplex has been infiltrated. It's true. In, in, in ways nice. both stealthy and more direct. <laughs> well, I mean, they kind of work off of each other, right? Because the direct one makes the stealthy one more stealthy. Even if it shouldn't. Even if you should expect wouldn't just, to be... Wouldn't it just put everyone on high alert? I mean, you'd expect people to go on high alert, but you'd also expect people to go, ah, this is the offensive they're making. Um, like, you don't redouble the guard on the sewage treatment plants and sewers when your enemy makes yet another frontal assault that comes in via the maglev raids. Uh, to be fair... I don't That's think anyone nice. is going to be saying, ah, yes, but remember the ancient wisdom of from out of the sewers comes doom. <laughs> Aren't they technically different, like, universes? Which one? Oh. Fantasy and... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. To be fair, I'm quoting Twitch from League, who is basically a skater. Because ah, right. he's a plague rat who lives in the sewers and is mental. Because nice. yeah, I was just thinking of Skaven. Yeah, I, I, I also thought Skaven. Like I was thinking, where's that from? That sounds familiar. And then Carl started speaking. Oh yeah, it's Skaven. Yeah, it, it's 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 Twitch from League. Um, like I say, he's a he's a plague rat who lives in the sewers and has a crossbow that he tips with horrifying poisons and makes your flesh fall. He's basically oh, okay, so, so Riot, He's just a Skaven. Riot wanted to flex that Games Workshop doesn't have enough money to sue them. I see. Basically, uh, yes. <laughs> cool. Any other any other XP? <laughs> Any other? Who? All the XP. Sorry, yeah. Maybe. Fucking what am I talking about? Plot progression. Any other plot progression? Uh, maybe because we're lonely. Yeah, technically. <laughs> you did. And <laughs> equal trade for Stannis. Stannis the Manis. I was going to say Delta made it to Salona, but Delta technically didn't make it to Salona. Bits uh, of Delta made it to Salona. Cusco made it to Salona. Cusco just took control of Delta. He's not actually part of Delta. I'm group Delta's Imperial Army. Uh, what was the other one that someone said? Infiltration force and Stanis and Creed. I oh, don't know, that's technically plot progression as you're doing more general recon there. Yeah, infiltration of a high priority target. I mean, it stopped being a high priority target last session, I want to say, session before that when the plan got fucked at the last check. Yeah. Uh, character development. Does anyone feel like they developed their characters this session? I don't know about developed, but sort of reinforced. Koya is a professional. He will deal with situations as they come up. I think that's... I developed a new combat technique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say it's a similar, it's a similar thing, right? You're, you're also doing the same as Koya, where it's doubling down on personality traits you previously had, but you are still building them. I don't want to be mean and say... Um, because I don't even mean to Carl, but because Co learning to hate command. I mean, I, I was trying to find a good way to put it, so that works. Does Cusco blame himself for that? Actually, yeah. Interesting. I, I would say that was almost like, especially even in universe, that was almost demonstrably not Cusco's fault. Uh, you were getting zero logistical support from command. Um, all of the people who are qualified to do this fucked off to do, like, completely separate stuff. Like, none of the lieutenants are commanding the army group. Um, and two of them even had the option. Uh, 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 and even at the end there, the thing that, like, really turned it into a disaster wasn't your fault. It was your marines losing control. That eternal battle that exists within the heart of every quarreler between the desire for competent, professional, and speedy action and the desire for fucking blood. Yeah, but there's also that element of, like, deep down he's wondering, like, maybe if he didn't experiment on them quite so brutally, they would have actually listened to him. Yeah, I would, I would say it's, it's probably not that he's falling out of love command on a normal Space Marine Legion, but we are sort of flitting between 
We're the Ultramarines. We're professionals and blood for the blood god. Except in our case, I suppose it's skins to make a nice rug. Yeah. Skins I mean, we're kind of like, right there. Like, just go around scalping people. Yeah. I mean, it's what the white, it's what the white scars do. Skins, skins for the emperor. I like it. It's quick. It's to the point. It's emphatic. But we do see, like, generally, bipolar as one of our GNC flaws. You, you kind of are a bit, but I quite like because we were a little bit schizophrenic personality-wise in in the first season. So it's 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 interesting seeing it more coalesce down to like this is the scale, and you exist on that scale, but you yo-yo up and down between two points, or you try and get stuck permanently at one point. You're either full Coatlamox or full Coya. To be fair as well, there is at least a certain amount of in-universe things to justify this, because obviously the the Primarchs get fiddled with more the lower number they get. Obviously, obviously some of the lo- later ones, like Korax and Vulcan, are really deviant from the baseline. Whereas the earlier ones are very sort of samey, and mm. as TTS beautifully said, Li- Lionel Johnson was just a mess. He was both a spiteful, envious prick and also a paragon of humanity. It's like, maybe our Primarch's kind of similar. He's just really, really bipolar. I, I mean, I've got plans for how I view your Primarch, but also, like, it's the same It's the same situation as with the rest of your Legion. Your Primarch is the donator for your Gene Seed. Your Gene Seed is typical for your Legion. How you act, to an extent, typifies your Primarch. Actually, as well, Fulgrim's a really pretty bitch. He's pretty bipolar as well. A lot of the early Primarchs are. I Fulgrim, mean, Perturabo, the Lion. Look, all I'm saying is, through my smiling ass face, when you meet your Primarch, remember that you formed his personality. Oh, I know. I'm oh. genuinely having trouble deciding which way he'll go in the eventual heresy because I, I kind of know what his rationale would be, I think, and it doesn't map neatly, but that's also kind of interesting in and of itself. So, uh, so that is a fair amount of character development. Excellence of role play. Does anyone think anyone else role played particularly well this session? <laughs> I think Creed did pretty well with his, you know, you know, roll me forwards and let me leap at them with my teeth. <laughs> yes, armed with nothing but his immense biomechanical arm and its crushing power capable of lifting small tanks, he was able to defeat the enemy. He broke an enemy. He with bro- just a... Mu- <coughs> okay. Like a pogo stick of death is what I imagine. He's like. the true emblem of our legion. He was broken in body, but not in spirit, and that is all that matters. That's an extensive oh, augmentation from the mechanic. We're going to turn him. Was it the Iron Hand? The Iron Warriors were like all made to fuck just because. Iron we're going to turn into that just because of one guy who's like famously known in the legion for having beaten an entire small army regiment. With just a servo arm, no other limbs. Remember that your captain voting power is tied to is going to be tied to popularity at the end of this season. And I think our current front runners for who's most popular are probably so Koya and Mackie are popular within their squads, but fucking Coatlemox. Yeah, I think Coatlemox is going to win. Yeah. The, well, no, because it's not that you get. It, it's that your your voter strength is going to be determined by how popular you are. People will vote with you, basically. So, Coatlemox will only win if Coatlemox wants to win. If he throws his support behind a different candidate, then Coatlemox will be able to vote in other people. Coatlemox the kingmaker. Yeah, is, is what you're going to end up with. I well, think it was going to be like it was going to roll, roll off kill count and how aggressive our aggressive action. So Coatlemox nutting a train to death would mean the rest of the company was like, we wish to follow his example. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think kill count and aggressive actions definitely contribute to it, but they're not like they're not all of it necessarily. Otherwise, Mackie would be winning uh, as I suppose, depending on how you count orbital bombardment. But he did bomb. That still only place. counts as one. <laughs> Well, the Aeroplex isn't living, it's all the people who couldn't get out of the Aeroplex in time who died. Oh, on a, I know it related to something you said a little bit ago. I found a picture of how I want to look if I survive. Oh, a fake guide. Yeah, it's an Iron Hands Technarine, right? Yeah. <laughs> I am fucking brain. the pistons into legs at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... It's an interesting time. It's a, that's a huge weak point right there. It's like, look at all these pistons I have with no oh, armor. Yeah. Those, please, for the love of yeah, God. Yeah, but 
Yeah, but let, let's not get into Marines have weak points because this is the same universe where it's considered a mark of uh, being an officer to take your helmet off. We are not canonizing that. Fuck that noise. I do like to have a different color. You don't need to canonize it. It is canon. No, uh, we are decanonizing it in the same way we're decanonizing other dark stuff. I (laughs) I know. I can suspend much belief for 40k. Almost all of it. But the fucking helmets thing. It is fine to have it be an abstraction on the models. It doesn't need to come. Yeah, can I just have like a golden laurel on my shoulder pad or something? Yeah, you've got an apothecary uniform that marks you out as Yeah, that's, it's, yeah. it's the way officers are portrayed in the non-idiot fluff is they're really blinged up. Even um, Not considering wear helmets. <laughs> even considering my laser eyes, I thought it was a silly idea to take my helmet off when yeah. I picked it off. No, it 100% would be. It makes you massively more... Anywho. Excellence of roleplay. Any, any, any other that. excellence of roleplay. <laughs> um, to be fair, I thought at the end the way that uh, Benji did the professional marine shit diver, like, and I mean marine more as in like Navy SEAL sort of marine, like that style. Of, yeah, it's, like, it's it's the contrast between super soldier and super warrior. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was surprisingly devastating. Well, it, that no, is, I know, that I is know exactly the, the guy, dichotomy that we that we've got in our legion is. We've got a one half of us is very much Creed is leaving the sort of super warrior side of it where it's very much aha glorious melee combat and then there's me all gillied up in a poo filled sewer. <laughs> <laughs> but what's breaking up the camouflage? His poo filled hair, my child. His poo filled hair. Uh, any any other excellence of role? When you said blinking out the shit nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. I, I'm gonna fucking die listening back to the recording of this. Uh, any, I'll, I'll Bra- just, I'll Bravo put- two going pooey. Uh, um, yeah, Bravo two going pooey. Any other excellence of role player? I'm cutting it there. I think I think Carl's despair at <laughs> how badly things went. It did come across in your voice. It really did. Oh, it did. The fact that you did a big with me charge and then almost no one was with you and the charge worked. <laughs> just, oh. Just, oh. But hey, it's great. You got to experience the exact same thing Koya got to experience, just on a slightly smaller scale. <laughs> we, we shall now have a bonding moment. <laughs> As you look him in the eyes. And, and you were the only person who followed the orders you got in the original plan. Uh, yeah. At least yeah. to a degree. Yeah, he was supposed to go down with Creed, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, he wasn't. He was supposed to be, no, he was supposed to deploy with Mackie, but yeah. then Mackie didn't go where he was supposed to be, so it didn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, technically, we all came down together, but, like, yeah, the, the point being was, like, yeah. Okay, so you weren't following the orders that were laid out for you, but if I recall correctly, it, it you were... Straight fo- up didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter at that point, but you were also trying to follow the orders that were laid down for Coatlemox, which Coatlemox wasn't doing, so you were at least trying some... Uh, yeah. Cool. Okay, in that case, I make that out to be... Um, brain, why didn't I work this out beforehand? Um, 155 experience points for session number 11. I was about to put down some artwork to get another 5 XP. Well, it depends on the quality of the artwork, Holly, but let's see it. Is it artwork? It's, okay, let's see. It's just for Benji specifically. This is terrifying. <laughs> Wait, no, that's not accurate. You ca- you got to cancel out. He didn't get Titans. Cross out that Warhound. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. Not chunky enough. What is this Legion? I don't recognize the colors. Must be a ghost. I got it from a, called a, it from a subreddit called Imaginary fo- uh, Warhammer. Uh, it's a beautiful... Good, good subreddit. Beautiful picture, to be fair. I'm walking in the shadow of gods, I think. Yeah, god engine. Although, technically that warhound is... I mean, the scales are all out of whack for titans. I'm not even going to talk about it, actually. I don't even care that much. I don't know why I get involved in that discussion. Um... I can't think it's a chaos warhound, though. Uh, it's not. No, it's just an alpha. It's just attached to an alpha. It's just... Just Mm -hmm. attached Because it's they they look like Heresy era Alpha Legion or Great Crusade era Alpha Legion. 
Because uh, the backpacks. Yeah, they, they have, are. They're, yeah, they're the, using Mark II. Yeah, and the backpacks aren't Warmer. mutated yet. Um, so it, I think it's just a slightly spiky Warhound. I don't think it's a Chaosy Warhound. The the Warhound's helmet isn't also isn't snarling nearly so much as the Chaos ones usually do. Because I do love that like armor style. It is oh, pretty it's so awesome. gorgeous! Like it really is. I, I, I think the thing to, that impresses me about the Alpha Legion armor is it, it should be dumb, right? It's supposed to be camouflage armor, and I love it so much that I don't care that it's dumb. And that's kind of what I want out of 40k. It kind of is. They've got loads of bits of scales on it that's yeah, supposed to shimmer like, and yeah. glow. It's really nice. The Forge World Alpha Legion models are my favorite oh, ever. They are. If they, they, they just look, made look those best. normal Space Marine models, I would play the shit out. I, I you got the Hot Emperor's uh, Dreadnought there. Do you want to see something more from the same from the same subreddit? It was just kind of gloriously done. It terrifies me, the thought. It is a natural combination. So, uh, yeah, 155 experience points. Uh, this 75 was funny initially, but it's starting to bother me. Especially as with the long form campaign, I might like drop the standard XP gain down from 75 to 50 next next camp. We'll leave it at 75 for the time being. You know, the only oh, annoying um, thing about the XP thing I find is there's a lot of advances in Death Watch that are you're trying to advance up to make yourself better, and it's all like do two more damage with each bot. It's like God damn it, we're not doing strategy combat. This is useless to me. Yeah, the uh-huh. thing for me that I was going to ask about is like uh, the way that everything's gated behind like ranks. Like, yeah, uh, are, are we, we still doing... rank one at this point? I guess you, you, rank you'll rank two? one until you fill out rank one, and then you go up to rank two. Is that how it's really? supposed to work? That feels that's, yeah, that's, yeah. How that's how I've understood it. Yeah, no, it, 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 you start at rank one. There's no rank zero. No, that's not what was being asked, though, Ollie. Oh, yeah, it's but, progression. I mean, um, it's progression, but I think you have to fill out everything in rank one. I don't, no, think, I don't, I don't think that's the case. No, that's, it's an XP amount. That's not, yeah, I think... Oh, is it an XP amount? You know what, I will, I will take a... I, pr- I know I said this, like, eight weeks ago and then just forgot, but I will, I will read the fucking... This section of the rules... And then it, I will it, come back to you with a misunderstanding that sounds plausible until we discover the structural problems in what I failed to read correctly oh, like three months ago. Can you put that in the reminders so we can get angry? Oh, yeah, yeah, actually, that's a very good a very good call. When I, yeah, all right. So what is that? Uh, you and will it's, read the... And rules until we figure it out. Yeah, it's like I was looking at command after the reminder, and I'm just like, I have to be rank two to get like a basic level of... Motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Fair. Um, it's... I think we start with 12,000 XP spent, roughly. Uh, and I think it's 16,000 to the next rank. I, I mean, it's all guesswork at this point, I would say. Uh, so I will I will have a read into it. Uh, it can't be 16,000 to the next rank as well. It would be 16,000 at the next rank, uh, for the next rank, I think. Like, total. And even then, like what I'm inclined to do, especially if I'm drip-feeding you XP, is past a certain point, just go, like, we'll advance a rank every... Chronicle, uh, Chronicle, every campaign. Um, uh, do you look at the XP costs as well, because they are also scaled up. Okay, yeah. well, uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll have a look. Because uh, the thing is, I was, I got a bit carried ahead, uh, carried away with myself, planning like, oh, we could do a campaign, a, chron- a campaign set every decade. Uh, and the thing is that that tallies out at like, assuming that they finish on par, which some of them will finish a bit over par, some of them will finish a bit under par. par that would be like. Just over four real life years worth of content, so we might. Really... That's not doing anything else at the same in at any other point. Yeah, that's not playing any other systems and, before you, and and not accounting for like, um, what's the thing is uh, breaks and such at times as well or technical difficulties. So I kind of, I guess we'll we'll talk about it. It'll be a conversation. I'll try not to do it just unilaterally. But I I I don't want to fuck the XP curves on the characters and have them just be amazing at everything. But I also do want advanced to still feel meaningful and not at a snail's pace just because there's a lot of campaign. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But I will read the rules and get back to you, or fail to read the rules and you can all yell at me. True. Sure. Make the same promise again. In which case, that brings us on to everyone's favorite part of the session. It's the highlights. Benji, you're a bit of a late joiner. Do you have any highlights for that? I session? didn't get to hear a lot of it. I had to deafen myself because obviously I was at work, That's so totally I don't fun. have a huge amount of highlights. It's impressive that you managed to get anything listened at work, honestly. I would not have the, the attention for that. Uh, do you have any you want to get noted down? Would you like us to come back to you? Yeah, yeah. 
did, that was the point of me saying move on from me. Oh, sorry, I didn't hear you say move on. Yeah. Cool, in that case, Carl, do you have any highlights for that session? I do indeed. Uh, several. Uh, Scooby-Doo things. It wasn't supposed to be, but then Ollie just kept leaning into the spooky castle vibe, and, and we kind of <laughs> ran with it. That's when you go to try it. and take someone's mask off and just tear their face off. Ah! Oh, it was Skeletor no. all along. <laughs> ah. <laughs> <laughs> He's say He-Man, but it kind of works when you're talking to a Marine. Uh, any of the highlights, Carl? Following through with threats. Christ, that was grim. What did kill you the do? Captain, please. Um, so, uh, I was interrogating a colonel in front of a load of other officers that were, like, prisoners after the battle. Um, and then when he refused to give me information, I cracked his skull open like an egg and then ate his brains out in front of the rest of his command uh, team. Oh. See. Cool. I, Anything else? Uh, gymnastic antic. Anything else? A sludge trudge. The sludge trudge. It's a good rhyme. I like it. Uh, and uh, frog poople. I didn't say poople. Oh well, no, you said uh, poo frog people, and I, I'm just like condensing it to frog poople. God damn it! Uh, cool. Anything else? That's it. Thanks. Ollie, do you want any highlights for that session? Hmm. Um. Because you kind of think Carl mentioned the ones I wanted to... I, I guess oh, Creed God. breaking an army by being a murderous pogo stick. Murderous pogo stick breaks army. Okay, so a anything pogo else? Stick. Um, uh, Carl being like, who put the apothecary in charge? <laughs> yeah. uh, that's also fairly valid in the lyrics. Um, and uh, uh, I don't know if this makes sense, but I heard some mention of Pikachu, and then it got me thinking of Benji's thing. It was like, Pikachu, I choose you. But I don't know if that actually makes any sense. I'm not putting down a pun. No, I, I, it wasn't Pikachu, it was um, Zero. Uh, I, I said Pikachu because it, it got it from a meme originally that was Pikachu doing it, but it was uh, Bravo Two Zero going dark, and I said Pikachu okay. Zero going dark. Yeah, okay, that one then. <laughs> I yeah. don't even slightly get that one, I'm afraid. It, the joke is Bravo Bravo Two Zero going dark, which is the Sam Fisher thing, and I said Bravo Poo Zero going dark. Okay, so it's a pun. Isn't that the Pokemon thing for me was Captain Carpy. It just makes me think of Magic Carp. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not putting the, I'm not putting the pun down. Uh, veto. Okay, well, veto. You uh, you can't have a. Can't have anything else. Okay. Cool. Uh, Creed, do you have any highlights for that session? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, during my non-focus period, so I decided to try and make everything alliteration. They get slightly worse as they go, and there's only three of them. That's hilarious. All right. We have Mackie's Mechanical Maze Meandering. This is straight... Oh, no, it was Mac. Yeah, that's true. All right. Uh, he's Mechanical Maze Meandering. Anything else? Carl's Cursed Chant. Carl's Cursed what? Chant. Or Chancy. I no, think I'd find for luck that began with C. I tried. <laughs> the general terrible luck in forever in the session. Uh, anything else? Yeah, the last one contains a word I had to discover. <laughs> Luscious to lurid locks. Which one did you have to discover? Lurid? Yeah. I don't know if I'd really describe them as lurid. Maybe. Luscious to lavatorial? Oh, that's much better. Yes, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> lurid is quite a good colour, and I imagined everything was kind of like a muted brown. Yeah. I don't know if you've ever been to a sewage treatment plant, but I once took a horrendously depressing school trip to one. Um, Is that the one at the top oh, of the hill? School trip. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any other highlights, Creed? Oh, that was it for me. Fair, fair. Uh, cool, Mac is Benji. Do you want any highlights for that session? Gooby dooby poo. I hate you so much. <laughs> one of my oldest <laughs> friends will <laughs> know I still hate you. Uh, so you know it's a good relationship. 
Any yeah. any of the highlights, Benji? Uh, Bravo Poo Zero going dark. I'm not doing oh. fucking pun. <laughs> I refuse. I mean, I'm quite there. Any anything else? Uh, horrible case of over murder. Too damn. I don't know why my brain said leet. <laughs> yes, hello, early 2003. Nice to see you've not completely emptied the from the memory banks. And by nice, I mean fucking awful. Uh, it's out of my memory banks, you suck. Uh, the first thought is Tomb World. I can see, like, how you thought that. I didn't say so. <laughs> The trigger. It's like, oh, it's silver and moving, almost like it's liquid. Oh god, he's found a tomb world. I was I'm relying strong. on circuit board to make it to, to deactivate the meta panic, um, but I, I don't. I think that in my head did heavier duty, or was supposed to do heavier duty than it actually did. Um, any anything else? No, I think that's fair. I mean, I feel like we covered most everything. Um, yeah, it was a good session. Can I add? Uh, like, I know that we've done it quite heavily, but uh, like, part of me is trying to add like a Skaven influence with something like a uh, sewer murder kill. Yes, yes. I can see it. Okay. Ah, don't delete the highlights. Here. Oh God! Thank you. Like, uh, Ooh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, no, I was just going to say that you reminded me, uh, back in GCSEs, uh, one of our teachers deleted all of our coursework when he was meant to be submitting it to the exam board. Oof. Rip. Yeah. That is, uh... It's terrifying. Oh, yeah. Anywho, thank you all for a very entertaining session number 11. Does anyone have any final words for the recording? Scooby, Scooby, Pooh, where are you? <laughs>